Penn State continues to play musical quarterbacks this week. It'll be Doug Strang starting for Penn State. George, you've all heard the old cliche, the quarterback gets too much credit when they win, too much blame when they lose. But apparently the quarterback is becoming more important in college football as he has been in pro football for a long time. Well, what's happened, Stan, is that the, you take the top 20 college football teams today, they are so similar to pro teams. They are so big and strong on defense that you must have a passing game to be able to move the ball. You just can't just run at all day long, run at them all day long as they used to do. So there's been greater emphasis on the quarterbacks. Now what happens, you get a sophisticated passing game. These kids have to learn all the reads, and most pro coaches will tell you it takes a couple of years to train a good quarterback. Now what happens, like in the case of Blackledge, you get a boy who comes in, and he gets an early start. He plays for two and a half years, and the kids behind him don't get a chance to play. The fellow graduates, and then you're asking young people to come in and do a great job as a quarterback without any experience. In the pros, they would trade for, trade for one, or they would pick up somebody someplace else. You can't do that in college. So I think more than ever, the good college quarterback in the major level has more pressure on him than ever before. Should Penn State, with lack of an experienced quarterback, adjust their offense accordingly? Well, you would like to do that. I think you can do that if you're playing weaker teams. But when you go against major eight or nine major college teams that are, might be ranked in the top ten, you know you have to move the ball somewhat through the air, and you have to throw the ball. You just can't run on them anymore. It's the same as professional football. The difference between professional football and the top major teams is very little today. This Iowa State, uh, Iowa team comes into today's game with a record of 1-0, ranked 12th in the country. This may be the hallmark of Penn State's season. If they win, they can turn it around. If not, they'd be 0-3 and, and perhaps in for a long year. George and I will be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. And at Beaver Stadium, Iowa against Penn State. George, I honestly think this could be the turning point in the Penn State season. If they can win, they have a chance to turn it around. If they lose and go 0-3, it could be a very long year. Well, they sure have their backs to the wall, Stan. Joe Paterno's never lost three games in a row. It's their last chance to get back up into the rankings. There you see the officials. Thomas Temmer is the referee. This series, they've played seven games, the two clubs have. Penn State has won five. Iowa has won two. The last time they met, seven years ago, in 1976 at Beaver Stadium, and Iowa won that game 7-6. Back deep, Norm Granger, number 26, and number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Granger on the near side. Greg Montgomery to kick off for Penn State into a slight win. Deep kick. Granger let it go through the end zone over the end line. That'll be a touchback. So Montgomery booms one, and Iowa will start out first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. This is a team that Amassed over 500 yards last week against Iowa State. First and 10 on the 20 for Iowa. Hawkeyes running primarily out of an eye, but they will split to a pro set. Chuck Long is their quarterback. Last week he hit 13 out of 17 for 76%, one touchdown, no touchdowns. The man to watch is number 33, Owen Gill. Rushed for 136 yards. That's Gill in motion to the far side. Long will throw on first down. Setting up the screen. He's in trouble. And he dumps it, and he should get called for intentional grounding, and there it is. Well, they, they try to come out with a screen play on the first play. Not a bad call, but Penn State was ready for them. An obvious intentional grounding. Let's take a look at it. You'll see Gill to the top of your screen going to motion. They came out with two tight ends, one wide receiver. Long drives back, tries to set up a screen, but it's perfectly played, perfectly defensed, throws the ball down, and he gets called for a penalty. And it'll be intentional grounding, which also means a loss of down, so it'll be second down, and long yard. It's the ball all the way back to the four-yard line. So it'll be second down and 26. Loss of down goes with a penalty. You gotta be a little less obvious than that. I mean, he just like he was driving a spike in there. So, second down, 26 yards to go. Norm Granger, the fullback. Gill, the tailback, in the eye. This is Gill. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. 
Harry Hamilton up there to close the gap along with Scott Radisick. Give him a gain of one, it'll be third and 25. Well, for those people who uh, are vowed to field position, this is a good start for Penn State. They got him buried deep. It's third and long, and they can do a lot of things on defense. Long your quarterback, Gil the tailback, Ranger is the fullback. J.C. Jordan is the wingback. Dave Moritz and Mike Huford are the receivers. They're going to punt on third down, and they barely get it away. Ball taken, got a chance for a return. It's Mark Robinson at the 33-yard line. Bob White put a big rush on the punter, Tom Nickel, and almost blocked it on a quick kick. George, you it don't see that kick. It actually was a quick kick, Stan. They sneak Nickel into the ball game, and Penn State's in great field position. Well, Doug Strang will get the started quarterback. He's completed 7 out of 19. John Williams and Tony Mumford in the backfield. Kenny Jackson... Kevin Bob, the wideouts. Kirk Bowman, tight end. Heller, Moles, Hayden McGinnis, and Short. First down and 10. Mumford, straight up the middle for three to the 30-yard line. Mike Yakulo, inside linebacker, number 39, makes the tackle. You know, Tony Wankett, Paul Hufford, Hap Peterson, George Little, Dave Strobel across the front. They play the standard 5-2. Yakulo and Station. Station is an excellent linebacker. Hunter, Greer, Chambers, and Hawley. Second down and seven. Penn State at the Iowa 30. Iowa defense shifting. Receiver split either side. John Williams got a big hole. 25 down to the 23-22. And that'll be very close to a Penn State first down. Ron Hawley and Keith Hunter make the tackle for Iowa. And that was a sharp play, Stan. Iowa overshifted to the wide side of the field. Watch Jonathan Williams make the cut. They've overshifted to the left side. He sees it, gets a good block by McGinnis and makes a cut. Gets up field quickly. They're going to measure for the first down. We should mention, George, this Iowa football team led the Big Ten in defense the last two years. And it's a veteran team, uh, Stan. They're big, they're strong. And Penn State certainly will have their work cut out from today. There's the first down. Right. So Penn State last week only had two first downs in the entire first half. They picked one up in their first possession at the 22-yard line. So Jonathan Williams looked a little bit like his old self on that cut. He made a he accelerated, found a daylight to the right, and got up there and got that first down. Joe Paterno said that this week in practice, John Williams began to cut like the John Williams of old. So far, Penn State has tried it on the ground. First down and ten. Bow right, Jackson left at the 22. Williams, not much running room, gets a couple to the 20-yard line as they try the quick pitch. George Little, who is from Duquesne, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Pittsburgh, makes the tackle. He is a junior at 6'4", 250. It is a huge Iowa football team, not necessarily on defense, but on the offensive line, we get a chance to look at them. They are unbelievable. Second down and eight, Penn State, just outside the Iowa 20. Sprang to throw, looking, man wide open, and it is Kevin Bow. He's got it inside the 10 for the nine. Make it Kenny Jackson. He's got it at the nine-yard line, and that'll be good for another Penn State first down. Okay, it was a running down. We get a, we get we get single coverage on Jackson. Play action to Williams. A little turn in, but most important strength by the football. He stepped up and he let it go. Let's take a look at another angle. Now, what strength set up? Keep his feet under him. Step and fire that football right on target for the first down. First and goal at the nine. Now Williams goes to a wing right. Right side to the left side. Strang, bootleg. He throws, and it is caught for a touchdown. Dean Domenio, the tight end, and the Indy Lions have scored. That's the first decent scoring drive they've had all year. It's a well-organized play. They set up the bootleg. Watch him come. He rolls, gets a good block here from Williams, enabling him to get him enough time to hit Domenio into the end zone for the touchdown. Penn State's second touchdown of the year. Nick Gansatana will kick. He is 0-for-1 on extra points this year. Ball's down. Kick is up, and it is good. So Penn State marches 33 yards after the quick kick, and they 
have taken a lead. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 7, Iowa nothing. We'll be back right after this. Okay, this is bootleg action. You watch Mumford go one way, Strain comes out, fires the ball for the touchdown. Two out of two. Montgomery's kick goes deep in the end zone. Harmon will stay in there with it. And once again, Iowa will start out at their own 20. And George, what a tremendous confidence booster. It has to be, first of all, for the defense to hold and also for Doug Strang. The most important thing, though, Doug Strang came out, fired the football, then he get a chance to complete a pass for a touchdown, he put it right on the mark. 33 yards, five plays, Strang to Demidio, a nine-yard touchdown pass. And that, of course, is Strang's first touchdown pass of the season. Dan Lonergan had the other one to Sid Lewis against Nebraska. And for the first time this year, Penn State has a lead. Long and a play fake. Throwing out in the flat. Man open and is overthrown. Intended on the far sideline for split end Dave Moritz. He is a senior. Six feet, 185 pounds. Caught one pass last week against Iowa State for 11 yards, no touchdowns. But something else that I just saw was great. That time, Fruin, number 92, he took the receiver and he bumped him within the legal limits and kept the, the receiver from running a smooth pattern. The whole thing was thrown as a ride. There you see the Penn State defense, Harry Hamilton, the hero, Sidnor, and Fruhan on the corners, Mark Robinson, the safety. So long. Brings him out second and 10 at the 20. The guy standing up there is the tight end. Here's Gill, hit at the line of scrimmage, and he gains a yard only out to the 21-yard line. Penn State reading very well. Kind of a late developing play. That'll bring up third down and nine yards to go. Gill is quite an athlete, a junior at 6'2", 220. Gained 136 yards last week, an eight and a half yard per carry average, and scored four touchdowns. Also caught a pass for nine yards. And we ought to add that Long last year completed 65% of his passes. That tells you something that they don't necessarily throw long, more shorter patterns. Third down and eight. Drop play. Granger, first down, 30, and out to the 34-yard line. Norm Granger, the big fullback, picking up big yardage for the first down for Iowa. Hamilton and Robinson make the tackle. This is a good call. It's a, they come back and repeat it the same play. It's a, it's a draw play again. This time, Penn State gets strong. Third down has been Penn State's real problem this year, offense and defense. Cattuso took a side. They expect the pass. Mashantonio got picked off, and it was an excellent call by the coach. And a good block by Owen Gill, who shows he also blocks as well as runs. At the Penn, at the Iowa 34, Long dropping back, blitz on, got time, throwing to the flat that is caught for a first down and knocked out of bounds is Bill Brohammer, the wing back. Chris Sidnor was on the coverage, but again, playing very loosely, as Brohammer makes the reception. Well, once again, this is excellent play calling. You run two draw plays for the first down, comes back on first down and throws the ball on Al Patton to number 27, Jordan. Let's take a look at it here. A lot of time, good play fake. Long shows us he's very accurate. That's Jordan making the cut to the sideline. The gain is 12. Long now one out of two for those 12 yards. First down and 10 yards to go. Motion to the far side is Harmon. Play fake and Long looks to throw. He does. Wide open is Moritz at the Penn State 40. And inside the 40 to the 39. Oh, Long hits two consecutive passes for two consecutive first downs. And again, Moritz was wide open. Duffy Cobbs, who replaced Sidnor, made the tackle. Now, they're holding the linebacker is a little bit. Everything's a play fake. He fakes up inside to Granger. Moritz just does it turned in for another first down. First down, give inside. Gill gets a couple as he drives down to the 36-yard line. Give him three and make it second down and seven yards to go. Steve Sefter made the tackle for the Nittany Lions. He, by the way, is the leading tackler on the team coming into the game. Carmen Massantonio cleaned up on the play. Ten minutes, 24 seconds to play, first quarter. Penn State on top of Iowa, 7-0. Scoring on a touchdown pass from Strang to Domitio. Second down and seven. Receiver split either side in the eye. Long rolling, flag down. Long will keep to the 35, inside the 35, and down to the 30, and very close to another Iowa first down. But again, there are two flags down. Let's see what we've got on a call. 
Well, from where it was thrown, it looks like it would be an offensive uh, penalty. They threw it as they tried to turn the corner. Legal motion. Well, it was a rollout action, Offense. Stan, and usually you get holding as they try to reach block or, or legal motion either one. It is a legal motion against Iowa. Quite obviously, Penn State will take the penalty. That'll move it back to the 41 and bring up second down and 11 yards to go. So thus far, Penn State helped out by a couple of penalties. We'll get the call from the referee. Illegal motion. Offense. Second down. Maybe you heard that come in. Somebody else on the sideline. You're wrong, Tommy. That came from the Iowa pitch. Second down and 11. A passing down. Now they move from the pro set to the wing. Long on the roll, throwing out in the flat, incomplete, intended in the flat for the wing back pro hammer, and that'll bring a third down. That was a check off, Stan. They looked out, they saw Duffy Cobb uh, uh, covering uh, Bill Brohammer, number 27, and uh, they checked off and tried to hit him on an out pad. Well, it's interesting, Duffy Cobb's already in the game because on the first completion of the game for Iowa, Again, Chris Sidnor is playing very soft off the receiver. And they did not waste a down in taking Sidnor out and putting Cobbs in. Maybe we can get an isolation look at what the cornerbacks are doing here. It's an obvious throwing down. Third down and 11. Long, straight drop. Not much of a rush. Now he's rushed out of there. Scepter's after him. Here comes Hines. Long throws over the middle, and it is caught by Moritz. First down. 15, 10, 5. Knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Dave Moritz. Mark Fruen knocked him out of bounds. Chuck Long on the scramble. It's a 40-yard gain. Well, that's been Penn State's nemesis all, as, all year long. Now, here Long shows he's a great player. Can't find a receiver. He gets some pressure here. Starts scrambling. Now, the contained man let him go. He gets outside. That was Bobby White, number 34. He overran the play. Picks up Moritz, number five, makes the reception and down scoring territory. First and goal from the one yard line. Get inside. That is Eddie Phillips, and he does not get there. Gained little, if any. It'll bring up second down and goal from inside the one yard line. Tough third down conversion to give up because the line of scrimmage was at the 41 yard line. And Iowa obviously would have been on a field goal had they not been able to convert. So it is second down and goal from the one-yard line. Tim Sennett, number 17, a fullback, comes into the game. They line up in a power eye to the left. Sennett in motion. Phillips, touchdown, Iowa. Eddie Phillips on the one-yard run. And Iowa on an 80-yard drive. Well... Now let, let, all right, here's a touchdown. This is just a good takeoff by the offensive line, and he gets in for the score. Let's take another look at it. You see number 22, Phillips, driving hard to the inside, makes the touchdown. But that was an awfully big play, obviously, that the long uh, uh, pass to Moritz. He was scrambling around, picked out the receiver beautifully. Tom Nickel will attempt the extra point. He is six out of seven on the season. They played only one game. Iowa marching 80 yards for the score. And we have a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 7 and Iowa 7. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Tie ball game, 8.44 to play in the first quarter. John Ralph kicks off to Lewis and to Bow. Bow short at the 15. 20, and out to the 26-yard line. So the return is only 11. Penn State will have it first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Joe Schuster, defensive lineman, and Bruce Gear make the tackle. 80 yards and 12 plays. Eddie Phillips on a one-yard run, but the big play on third and 11. And that, that a 40-yard completion from Chuck Long to what, Dave Moritz. What an experienced quarterback can do. That, that shows what the experience can do. Long's an experienced quarterback. First down and 10. 
Mumford and Williams behind Strang. He will throw on first down. He's in trouble. He gets it away. And it is tipped up by Dick McGinnis, the offensive guard. And a flag is down. An eligible receiver will be called. Strang got panicky and just threw to the first guy he saw, which was an offensive guard. Well, that's a very poor play. I mean, if he was going to try to get rid of it, he should have tried to get it to the sidelines. Don't throw it into a crowd. They're very fortunate that that ball was not picked off by Iowa. And it's a loss of down, so Penn State will face the same problem that Iowa did on Iowa's first possession. Dan, tell me when the last time you saw it within the first quarter two intentional groundings. You yep. only ever see, used to never see it. Now we've seen two. The, the, the officials are calling it more and more. Okay, this one is a, in essence, an eligible receiver downfield. So it'll be second down. 15 yards to go. Williams. Couple out to the 23-yard line. It'll be third down. 12 yards to go. We want to remind you that announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid... Third down, 13 yards to go. Receiver split either side. Strang to throw. He's in trouble. He can run if he wants. 25 out to the 30, 31 yard line. It'll be short of the first down by five yards, but he did pick up eight yards on the play. It'll be fourth down, five yards to go. Linebacker Mike Yakulo, a junior, 6'2", 227, came up to make the tackle. On defense, Iowa was keeping him a little off balance on that first play where it was intentional ground and they blitzed and he had to get rid of the ball. That time they only rushed three. There was no receivers open. Reynolds, who was averaging 45.6 yards per kick, will kick to Robert Smith, a freshman, number two. An exciting player with great speed. He's averaging over 11 yards per return. Reynolds' kick is up. It's very high. Fair catch called for. And Smith dives for it and takes it at the 27-yard line. The kick is 42 yards, no return. Iowa will start out at their own 28-yard line. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 7, Iowa 7. We'll be back after this. 7-11 to play in the first quarter. Iowa is long, rolls left. He's throwing along the sideline. It is overthrown and incomplete. Intended for Ronnie Harmon on the near sideline. Pass way overthrown. Duffy Cobbs was on the coverage. That was an audible stand. Uh, Long does a real fine job. He saw a single coverage over there. Harmon against Cobbs. Went to uh, to try to get the ball to Harmon, but Cobbs was really stuck to him like glue. Long thus far in the ball game. It's three out of six, 65 yards. I was with their third possession. First time they had a call it out making the first time. Down the second time. They marked 80 yards and 12 plays. Eddie Phillips in the game. As Long dropped the throw. In the flat. Caught by Phillips and knocked down to the 31-yard line. Mike Zordich came over to make the tackle. The game will be three. It'll be third down and seven yards to go. Good read there by Mike Zordich. Look, just a little too much time, though. Uh, you let a kid like Long stay there, stay there, pick out his receiver. Gets Phillips coming out of that slot formation. Well, so they're a third down conversion now for Iowa. Moritz comes left. Lined up in the eye. Now, as you see, an audible at the line of scrimmage. Fake draw, pass over the middle, and it is caught by the tight end, John Hayes. And that'll be good for an Iowa first down. Fruhan and Robinson made the tackle, but too late to prevent the completion to Jonathan Hayes, junior, big tight end, 6'5", 225. Plays like that, you have to smell. That time, they, they had run a draw play earlier for two nice games. They faked the draw, hit number 34, Hayes, the tight end, coming across for the first down. So the Hawkeyes completing another third down conversion on the first down and 10 yards to go. Harmon in motion. Pitch wide to Phillips. Gets a block. 
breaks through and cracks into Penn State territory very near another Iowa first down. Hamilton and Radisic knocked him out of bounds, but looked like Penn State had it strung out, George, but he really made a nice cut and cut it upfield. Well, we'll if we can see this, watch number 16, Duffy Cobbs, comes up, forces, and he lets him get inside of him here. Now, they, now two guys had a shot him. That's poor tackling. He's Hamilton trying to pull him down. That was a nice run by Phillips. And a good block by the fullback, Norm Granger, who last week was Iowa's leading pass receiver. He caught four for one touchdown. Second down and one, so you have to be careful here. They can do almost anything. Phillips again, first down at the Penn State 42. Harry Hamilton makes the tackle. So the Hawkeyes, on their second march of the game, now have six first downs. Now we can see Phillips, he's really, you know, again, again, there's Granger leading up. There. He's a 225-pound fullback, good block. Radisic is not in good position, but they have a lot of balance to their offense. They can run the football and have an excellent short passing game. And of course, Long is so accurate. Phillips comes out and Owen Gill back in the game. First down and 10 at the Penn State 42. Long just get rid of it. Rid of it. He's got his man. Owen Gill got rid of it very nicely because big pressure coming from Joe Hines, who knocked Long down. But Long read it. John Walter. All right, let's take a look at this. Here they go. They go back to first down. First down. They get a good first down. They come back with the pass from a split backfield pro set. And there's Gill just getting into the flat. They're trying to get one-on-one -on -one coverage of the of the backs on the linebackers. But, you know, later on I want to make a point about defensive play calling. You can call good defensive games as well as offense. Long six out of nine. Second down and three yards to go. Here the Penn State 35. Gill, big hole, but it's closed up quickly. He gets to the 32 and may have a first down. Mike Zordich and Mark Fruhan came up to meet him. Zordich, who has played outstandingly at linebacker after playing hero back last year, probably going to have to measure. Nope, they give him the first down. We'll see him to the right of the screen. He comes up. He didn't have that far to go. And Gill goes up there, dips that shoulder. He's a big, tough, 220 pound running back. I meant to say before, Stan, when you get a team that mixes them up like this, the defensive man calling defenses has to mix his defenses up also. Because, you know, you can call a good defensive game as well as you can call a good offense. 5.05 to play, first quarter. Iowa, Penn State are tied. Iowa with a big edge in first downs. Motion, Harmon to the near side. Play fake, long to throw. Wide open is Gill in the flat. 30, 25, 20, 15, and knocked down at well, they're going to now call him down to the 17-yard line, but the game is good for 15 with another Iowa first down. Harry Hamilton made the tackle. Well, there's an, there's an example. Nobody has him now. Watch Gill. They fake the full, uh, to the fullback Granger to the inside. Radisic takes the fake. Now, the outside linebacker has to be there. Somebody, unless they got some kind of a game on, nobody's there. Sinner comes up. Fortunately, Harry Hamilton's there to put him down. Long has already gone over the 100-yard mark in passing. It's wide. Gill in trouble, and he's hit after a gain of two at the 15-yard line. Mark Robinson came in and cut his legs out from under him. Harry Hamilton also went on the play. The gain is two. It'll be second down and eight. Iowa really running a versatile offense, George. Really yeah. a Penn State off guard. Well, as I'm saying, they give you a balance, but you, what you got to do, you got to put pressure on. You have to make great down their timing. You got to put a lot of pressure and force them. High backfield with Fred Bush in there at fullback. Long, rolling again. Throwing in the corner. Got his man. It's complete at the four yard line and a first down to Bill Brohammer. Chris Sidnor beaten again. And it'll be first and goal for the Hawkeyes at the Penn State four. Once again, excellent play selection. Now, this is just a simple sprint out, roll out action. The fullback and the tailback lead in front of the quarterback. They got single coverage on their flanker. He goes down and out about eight to 10 yards and the ball's there, he turns around and the defensive back must play him tougher. Bob White comes in, there's an extra defensive end. Scott Carraher comes into the game. And again, very little pressure on Long. And we saw about three plays ago, they're dropping the defensive ends into the flat. Not helping. First and goal. Gill. Touchdown, Iowa. 
Iowa marching right through the Penn State defense. Uh, okay, Scott Carraher gets blocked. Radisic gets in there a little too late. Didn't fill the hole quite quick enough. This is coming at you. Now watch number 77, Har Carraher. Scott takes the inside. You cannot do that unless the linebacker is right off your tail filling that hole. We talk about that Iowa offensive line, 275, 265, 250, 265, and 280. They are monstrous. Nickel, one for one today, seven of eight on the year. will attempt the extra point. Ball's down, the kick is up, and it is good. So Iowa has now scored the last two times they've had the football, 343 to play in the first half. A 72-yard drive in 12 plays, taking 3 minutes and 28 seconds. Gill scoring from 4 yards out as you look at Hayden Fry, the Iowa head coach. So the Iowa offense has been all that it was expected to be. Well, we, they know they got a, a, Penn State knows they have a great offense, but defensively, uh, you know, you repeat saying some things, you have to put pressure. You're going to let a quarterback who's that accurate roll out, you can play single coverage on the wide receivers. You're putting him in an awful bind because he'll string it out, string it out till the receiver makes his cut. You got to come off the corner a little bit. They got to blitz a little bit. They got to take some chances. Joe Paterno said in the paper he felt that you know they haven't been playing well because they're playing up tight. Uh, playing up tight to me is not taking chances. You have to take some chances, especially if you cannot contain an offense. You know, playing a basic defense. Two things come to mind, George. On the first series of downs, when they got long for the intentional grounding, that came out of blitz. And the second thing is, on this particular Iowa touchdown drive, we saw that John Waller, the defensive end, dropped off in pass coverage, and so you're admitting you're only going with a three-man rush. Well, that's, that's exactly what's happening. I, I would make these quarterbacks function under a lot of pressure rather than let them just, you know, stand in there and pick, pick the receiver that they want. John Ruff to pick off the Lewis and Bow. Pick is high. Bow goes back and takes it one. Nowhere. Out to the 15. Penn State will start poor field position. Kevin Spitzik makes the tackle along with George Davis for the Hawkeyes. 72 yards, 12 plays, 3 minutes and 28 seconds. And again, a third down and 11. Big conversion for Iowa. It's been the key to both their drives. They ran and passed equally well. Sid Lewis comes out wide to the right side. In the eye backfield behind quarterback Doug Strang. This is Williams. Gets three out to the 18 yard line. Second down and seven yards to go. Tony Wankett, left defensive end, number 92, made the tackle. Williams came into the game averaging four yards per carry, which is a fairly good average, but he only gained 87 yards in two games. They haven't had the ball that much. They keep giving it up, but it, I do think Penn State could, uh, you know, mount an offense against this Iowa defense. They, they got to do some things, and the quarterback's got to read some defenses and call some audibles. Strang is two for two. Wing back counter to Williams. Good, tough run, and he gets it out to the 23-yard line. There wasn't much doing, but John Williams was hit and spun out of the tackle and got out to the 23-yard line, where it'll be third down and two. Half Peterson and Dave Strobel make the tackle. Williams moved into ninth place last week in the Cincinnati game. Two minutes and 40 seconds to play first quarter and a very important third down conversion. Last week, Penn State was one out of 15 third down conversion. And that'll kill you, Stan. Absolutely kill you. Lining up in a power eye, now shifting out of it. Nichols goes to the wing on the left side, now in motion. Williams, no. Gained a half a yard of the 24, and Penn State will be forced to punt. Hap Peterson made the tackle, and the Penn State offensive line is not doing the job. Robert Smith will go deep, and Reynolds, who had a 42-yarder in his first punt of the day, will kick again. Under two minutes to play, first quarter. Not much of a rush. Reynolds gets off a pretty short kick, but it takes a bounce inside the 30, and Penn State gets a big break. Ball will be touched dead at the 21-yard line. So a 55-yard kick for George Reynolds. We want to remind you that announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid for 
by Total Communication Systems and any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of the game without the express written consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. Well, Penn State once again on a third and two does not convert, and luckily they get a good roll on the punt. Well, what's frightening, though, Stan, is that uh, last week uh, Cincinnati was able to score after a couple of fumbles on very short drives. Uh, the last two Ohio scores have been on long drives. They've really dominated the line of scrimmage. First down in 10, Iowa. Draw play, Gill. He's got a big hole. The 30 and out to the 33-yard line, close to the 34. Owen Gill on a 14-yard run. Mark Robinson made the tackle. When your safety's making most of the tackles, you're in big trouble. This time they run the draw from, uh, from a split backfield, but they run an outside draw. He gets a great block by Phillips. Seals off Mash Antonio, and Mark Robinson again makes the tackle. So Iowa, in whatever field difficulty they were, now has the ball out of the 34, certainly better operating room. Ritz comes wide to the left. Wing left in the eye backfield on first and ten. Brohammer motion far side. Gill cuts up to the 35 and gets to the 36-yard line. Penn State closed quickly there with John Walter and Greg Gattuso. A gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Well, that, that's the way you have to play. That time Walter's 86. He was key in tailback. Al, Al came to flow to him. He come down, closed it into the forcing Gill back to the inside to the pursuit. That's aggressive football. They have not played that aggressively on defense so far. You know what else is not necessarily a good sign is that Penn State scored first, and you think they would have all the emotion be charged up, and Iowa came back and twice rammed it down their throat. Second down and eight, Iowa. Harmon in motion. Here comes a blitz. Here's a blitz. They got long, and he gets away. He throws. It's batted up in the air and incomplete. Almost had him, but good pressure. Donnie Graham from middle linebacker came in to put the big heat on long. And, George, you were right. Pressure on the quarterback may be the answer. They've blitzed twice, and they've caused problems. They made things happen twice. There's Donnie Graham. That breaks Long's concentration almost to an interception over here. You have to give him a little heat. you got to go after him. Take a gamble once in a while. Interesting, Graham, who normally plays behind Radisic, is playing another linebacker position. Radisic and Graham, who hail from the same high school, are in there together. Third down and eight. Another conversion down. Here's Gill. He's got the first down. 45-yard line. Again, Penn State on third and long gives up the first down. Mark Robinson, the safety, comes up to make the tackle. And again, Penn State is caught. Iowa picks up the first down at their own 45, and what will be the last play of the first quarter? Okay, this time they had a little a game on. Radisic goes inside. They take it to the outside. It's a well-designed play, but they're... Nope. All right. Let's see the secondary, how they react. A little slow. The corner didn't get up. Fruin's got to get up there. Moritz, five, held him downfield for about eight yards downfield. He's got to get up there. And again, Penn State blitz, but this time... Running it on the draw. Radisson got caught inside. Of course, that's one of the gambles you take with a blitz. It is good for an Iowa first down. The Hawkeyes have already rolled up 11 in just the first quarter. Stan, you can blitz from the inside, but you also can blitz from the outside. There's a thing as a corner blitz and, and safety blitzes and things where you come from the outside. So the clock running down on the first quarter. A quarter that saw Penn State start quickly, but Iowa really coming on at the end. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Iowa 14, Penn State 7. We'll be back right after the touchdown. Iowa leads 14-7, and Penn State has the ball. Edit Q6. You ready? After, uh, Edit Q6. After Iowa made the extra point following the second touchdown for Iowa, Iowa leads 14-7, and Iowa has the ball again. We're back with second... We're back with second quarter action with Iowa in control of the football. Another draw play to Owen Gill. This time, Penn State stops him after a yard. It'll be second and nine. Joe Hines and Greg Gattuso making the tackle for Penn State. As far as running plays, they, they haven't run many plays. They've run a pitch sweep, 
and a couple of draw plays, an inside draw play, an outside draw play. They make their run go off their passing game. In the first quarter, Iowa with a huge edge in total offense, 182 yards. Now, if you want to multiply that, you're talking about a world's record. Penn State only 56 yards total offense. Wing right on second down and nine. Penn State defense in a blitz. Long, a flag down. Long is hit and he's dropped for the sack. A flag is down. Donnie Graham and Scott Carraher get credit for the sack. Let's see what the flag is all about. Well, we're talking to Radisic. They took the penalty. Dead ball foul, legal procedure, so the sack will not count. And let me make a point here. Here's what happens when you blitz. You might get caught once in a while, as they did before, and they got the first down. This time they blitz, you throw the quarterback for a 15-yard loss. But the next time he's going to pass, he's thinking about pressure. And that's what you have to do. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense. It'll be second down and 14. So the sack does not count, except... Mr. Long will remember Bill Happel, number 40, a wide receiver, comes into the game for Moritz. So, erase the sack. The penalty takes it back to the 41 and brings up second down and 14. Wing back reverse. Harmon trying to get outside, and he does. To the 45, and he's run out of bounds up at the 48-yard line. Mark Robinson came up and could not catch him, but again, another flag is down. Sidnor and Hamilton pushed him out of bounds, but again, we have a flag on the play. The game would be seven. But regardless of what happens uh, subsequent to the flag, uh, which is probably holding, but Walter, number 86. Now, let's take a look. This is a reverse. A little fake to Grange in the inside. Now, the corner man has to stay there. He can't take that inside move. Harmon almost got to the outside. Sidnor is there for the tackle. It is holding against the Hawkeyes. It'll bring up second down. And they have to get to another time zone to get a first down. But again, Penn State's conversion rate defensively has not been very good. Ball marked back to the 32-yard line. They have to get to the Penn State 45, so it'll be second down and 24 Holding. yards to go. Offense. You know, Penn State second does down. a better job st stopping first downs on short yardage than on long yardage. So far, the only thing that has stopped Iowa's offense has been penalties. Brohammer comes in, as does Eddie Phillips, who's a very good pass receiver. They have to watch for the draw here on second down, and Chuck Long is going to call timeout. Rep did not have the people in the game that he wanted, so there's a timeout in the action. 13.53 to play in the first half. The score, Iowa 14, Penn State 7. We'll be back right after this. Long is 8 out of 12 for 112 yards. There it is. Long throwing to the sideline and is almost intercepted. Mike Zordich had it. Stepped in front of Dave Moritz, but Zordich was there on the play to knock it away. Stan, you have to make those interceptions. A little fake to the inside, to the left of the screen. Zordich is in great position. You must make these interceptions. You must make these interceptions. Moritz tried to come back knowing he had no chance of the interception. Try to knock it away. Zordich was there. It'll be third down and 24 yards to go. And again, a key third down conversion because the Iowa putter is averaging only 35 yards a kick. Here's the give to Phillips. He's got a big hole. The 40 and out to the 42-yard line. A gain of 10, but short of the first down. Radisic and Robinson make the tackle. So... Rather unconventional call by No, Iowa. but it's a good call because no, they, can't, they know Penn State's taken the inside and the end is contained from the outside. There's a big hole on passing situations where the end rushes from the outside where the tackle takes the inside. And there was nobody there. He almost made that first one. Nickel will kick to Bow and Jackson. And a short kick. Bow takes it as 20. Tries to get outside. Looking for the wall. Just not there. Too long to develop. Flag. A return of eight yards, but a flag is down. And the flag is down back at the Iowa 40. So it happened at the line of scrimmage. We've got another flag downfield near the Penn State 30. Eddie Phillips was a 12th man on the field. But we've got another flag near the kick return. So we may have well, offsetting penalties here. 
I'm pretty sure it was Penn State on the second flag, uh, blocking from below the waist on the far side of the field. Option being explained to Kenny Jackson. Both penalties could be against Iowa, and they get their choice. I would presume if it is both of them are against uh, Iowa, they would make them kick again. The line of scrimmage would be, without the penalty, the 28-yard line. The kick was only 38 yards, and we're going to have him punt again. Sure. They say, they'll move him back. They'll punt again. They got an opportunity for a return and get better field position, presuming everything goes well. I think what we have here, George, there were offsetting penalties, but the penalty against Iowa was a major penalty, and the penalty against Iowa was a 12th man or a motion of some sort. Well, you know, Stan, I think they blew it, the officials. The penalty against Iowa should have been called before the ball was snapped. I took, and here it comes Nickel again. Gets off a better kick this time. Bow at his 17. The 30. 35-yard line. So Penn State on the second punt picks up an additional seven yards of field position. John Ralph, an offensive guard, made the tackle for Iowa. Uh, let's take a look at this once again. Here's a punt. This is a long punt now for Nichols. Now Bow takes it, much more sure-handed this week. He's looking for that hole to the inside, gets upfield, not, not enough daylight to make a big one. 18-yard return, and he was averaging only 3.7 yards per punt return going in. Mumford, right tackle and not much doing. Gets out to the 37-yard line. Bring up second down and eight yards to go. Penn State still has not been able to run the football. You know what we haven't seen this year yet, Stan? I hope we see it before it's over. The old traditional Penn State offensive line blowing people off the line, blocking people off the line of scrimmage, and creating daylight for their running backs. Rocky Washington comes into the game. He's been suffering from a hamstring. He's in the slot left. Second down and seven. Penn State throw him 37. He's wide open. Strang. Ball batted up in the air at the line of scrimmage. And he was indeed wide open. But it'll be incomplete. Paul Huford, number 64, got up in the air and batted it away. And that is Strang's first incompletion. So it'll be second down, or rather third down and nine. Strang two out of three. They put Washington in the slot, curled him over the middle. He's wide open. But many times when a ball is blocked like that, it's a lineman's fault for not getting into the, right. uh, it was play action, he's supposed to get into the body of the defender to bring his hands down. Because when a defensive lineman stands straight up, he should be able to cut him down. Slot to the left, uh, Washington motion near side, trying to throw, he's flushed out of there, now he throws to the sideline, man wide open, and it is caught out of bounds. The pass was caught by Washington, but they rule he did not have one foot in. Kevin Biles looking at the turf to show the official, that he had his foot in, but he's not buying any of it. Let's Fourth see if down. we can see it, Stan. That was close. Now, Strang felt that pressure there. Gets out to the outside. Rocky. Oh, no. Good call. Good call. He had his foot on the sideline. So Reynolds, who's at a 42-yarder and a 55-yarder, will kick away to Robert Smith, who is a very dangerous punt returner. Reynolds gets it away, backing Smith up to his 19. Trying to get outside, missed tackle, and he gets out to the 27-yard line. So it's a 44-yard kick. Smith returns for the Hawkeyes. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Iowa 14, Penn State 7. We'll be back right after this. Twelve ten to play in the second quarter. Iowa leading 14-7 the ball at their own 27-yard line. Long with a half roll in the flat, and it is caught oh. by Harmon. Missed tackle. He's got great speed and gets out to the 40 near the 41-yard line. Ronnie Harmon, very dangerous out of the flat. Sophomore at 6 feet, 195. John Walter had to come back and make the tackle. The gain is 12 and a first down. But Stan, it's a dangerous pass, too. If he underthrows it, it's six. But 
he puts it out there, and, and you've got to be very careful as the corner, man. You cannot come from the outside like that. you got to keep, keep your helmet in the middle of his back if you can't make that interception. Duffy Cobbs makes the miss on the play. Hit in the backfield and drop for a yard loss by Greg Gattuso. On the running play that time, they smelled it out and got some penetration. Even on the completion, however, they had a blitz on us. You saw Mashi Antonio They're coming, coming after. Yeah. They're going, I, hope, I, I wouldn't care if they lost by four touchdowns if they play aggressively, rather than sit back and get picked apart. Now watch Gattuso over here. He comes in, little game there, beats the center. He was in the gap, throws the ball carrier for the loss. Eddie Phillips was the victim of Gattuso. Second down and 11 yards to go. Out of the eye to the pro. Long. Got time in the flat. Wide open for a first down. And knocked out of bounds is Eddie Phillips. Don Graham pushed him out of bounds. But the gain is from the 38-yard line of the Penn State 49. So it's a gain of 13. And another Iowa first down. Well, this is Phillips coming out of the backfield. And the freshman Graham has given him too much room here. He's got to get play him a lot tighter so he can step in front of the football and maybe make an interception or knock it down. Iowa really rolling up first downs. 13. Penn State has two. First and 10 in the 49. Long quick drop in the flat. And it is caught by Moritz. Once again, got a lot of room to operate out there. Mark Fruhan pushed him out of bounds. That's a tough pass to defend. We talk about cushion, but it's a very difficult this pass is, to this, stop. This is a pro pass. A quick drop and just a quick out. It's a comeback. He makes the receiver come back to the ball, which, you know, it makes it tough for the defense. Once in a while, here's another angle of it, but once in a while what you got to do is go up there and play the guy man-to-man -to -man tough, you know, and show man-to-man -man coverage on him with a little help from the safety coming over. Plus it may force the quarterback to check off that receiver, and by that time he may get to him. Here's the draw play. The Granger going nowhere. Stop for no gain. Steve Sefter coming in to make the tackle. Penn State beginning to get a bit more penetration. And it'll bring up third down. Well, they're making some adjustments to, to, to uh, Iowa's offense. Now, what they did this time, that's the same outside drawer, but this time Sefter does not take a wide uh, course. He comes to the inside, and he knocks off the ball carry. Now, Penn State has done better on short yardage on third down situations. Let's see what happens. Third down, three yards to go for that first down. Give to the tailback, close to the first down, and I don't know if he made it or not. Scott Radisick and Don Graham, two kids from the same high school, Brentwood and Pittsburgh, really charged the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be very close. If not, I'm sure they'll go for it. It is fourth down, and a yard to go. Well, that... Okay, now you get a nice fill from Radisic. Scott has not really been himself. He's got to get a little bit better squared off. Actually, again, that was Graham. And they, I was not quite sure what they want to do. I think they're going to run for it. They put an extra tight end in. They brought Huffett in, number 86. So I think they're going to go with the two tight ends. Iowa calls timeout to talk it over. It'll be fourth down and one when we come back. Well, we have a timeout in the action. The score, Iowa 14, Penn State 7. We'll be back right after this. Iowa is going to punt, and we've got a flag down. Penn State will get called for roughing the kicker, and the flag is going to go against Joe Hines, and Iowa will get a first down by penalty. Inexcusable. Hines doesn't like it. So Iowa decides not to go for it on fourth and one, which is rather surprising, but they get a first down anyway. There it is, roughing the kicker, oh, no, running no, into no, the no. kicker. Oh, no, they said that he blocked. He got, got a piece it. of it, yes. Okay. That's what Hines was arguing about. I thought Iowa was going to try to get a long call count, draw Penn State offside, or maybe even run it up to the, to the up back, the full back up there with the two tight ends go for the first down. They went for the punt. Penn State has the ball about the 11-yard line. The referee, Temmert, made the call. Of course, it is his call, but one of the other officials said the ball was tipped, and of course, that waves off all roughing kickers or running into the kicker penalty. So we're sorry about the confusion. We apologize on behalf of the referee which was right there. I can't believe he didn't see it. Anyway, Penn State will have the ball deep in their own territory. That could be a big play in this game because if Iowa goes in and makes it 21-7, could be trouble. First down and 10 at the 11. Williams cracks out to the 15-yard line, and a flag down, and Iowa's going to get hit. 
with an unnecessary roughness call. And that'll give Penn State some operating room. Well, even though Penn State has bad field position, it's the same pattern of the first two games. First and second running downs. Uh, the defense comes with everybody, man-to-man -man across the board. Right here, see if we can pick up the penalty. I thought, is it face mask? Or face mask. Face Tony, mask. Tony Wankin, who made the tackle, number 22, gets called for it. There it is. You can see his, the hand come around here. Right there, number from the left side of the screen. That was Tony Wank at the defensive right, left end. Right but the uh, they're coming, they're pinning their ears back, and they're playing man-to-man -man right, right, across right. the board in the secondary. So in other words, the wide receivers, one of them is definitely single cover. Well, they've got the change mark at second down and three. It's tacked on, dead ball foul. Strang in trouble, throws over the middle, caught by Williams for a first down. Out of bounds near the Penn State 30-yard line. Larry Station. Pushed him out of bounds, number 36. But the pass is complete to John Williams. And the good part of it, Stan, is that Strang is under a lot of pressure, didn't panic, was able to find Williams coming across. He gets to the outside. That's an awfully big first down for Penn State at this juncture of the game. And what may also be encouraging is last year, Penn State threw to the backs a great deal. They have not done so this year at all. So out at the 29-yard line, Penn State with a third first down of the game. First down and 10, Kenny Jackson. Motion to the far side. Williams gets three out to the 32-yard line. In second down and seven yards to go with nine minutes, ten seconds to play in the first half. Mike Nicolo, number 39 for Iowa, makes the tackle. John Williams thus far, eight carries for 28 yards. Now, we can we can expect uh, Iowa to play for the run again. It'll be a great time to fake something inside and try to get deep or hit somebody close the middle. I wonder why we see this, Kenny Jackson or Kevin Bach. You can't double both of them. Skeeter Nichols is the fullback. Foul left. Strang with a play fake. Throwing over the middle. Got his man. It's Williams again, still on his feet, and he gets out to the 38-yard line. The game will be six, and it'll bring up third down and one. All right, I got another check off. He hit the back coming out again, but again, that time they try to double both wide receivers with the, well, watch this now, right here. But the tight end has to be open on, on, on single coverage. A little fake. Now, Williams will slide to the flat, to the left of the screen. But again, Strang is starting to show some poise. This is what comes, this is what comes from experience. Third down and a yard to go. The last time Penn State had third and short, they did not make it. They'll come out in a power eye. Nichols, Mumford, and Williams. It's Nichols. He's got the first down and then some. Penn State out to their own 44-yard line. They finally convert on a third down. Now one out of four. They've got that first down. Now throw the ball. Okay. Now they're going to get, they're going to get Iowa playing man-to-man -man in, the, in the secondary. One-on-one. -on -one. Now what? This is a good play. One foot goes in there real tough. They got a good crease from the offensive line. That's one of the better surges. Let's take a look at the left side of the offensive line. We can't see who's in there right now from the... Numbers, but that was a good surge, big first down. And a good a lead block by Skeeter Nichols paved the way. First down and 10, Strang will throw. Rush okay. out in the flat. It is incomplete. It was intended along the sideline for tight end Dean Demidio. Perhaps a ball that should have been caught. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Strang has now completed four out of seven for 39 yards. Play was there, Stan. The play was definitely there. You have to get the ball down a little bit. But, you know, now they're getting in the feel of what's going on. Second down and 10. Iowa, in this obvious passing situation, has run a lot of draws. Let's see if Penn State borrows a page from their book. There's Williams, 50, 45, and down to the Iowa 40-yard line. There it was. That's the exact same format that Iowa's been using. Get the ball out wide, loosen them up. They play pass, come back with the draw. Now watch Williams run with a little acceleration. This is the best he's looked. He gets a nice block from number 63 from Penn State. Uh, Moles, Todd Moles, who just moved over from defense to offensive guard. Rocky Washington comes into the game. Gain for Williams is 14. It is first down and 10. Throwing, got his man open, it's Domitio, and he's got the ball at the Iowa 33-yard line. Dean Domitio 
starting in place of Kirk Bowman. As a matter of fact, he is the only tight end to have caught a pass for Penn State this year. That should pump him up. They got a first down, come back with a pass. Okay, you got Iowa off balance. It's a tight end in the flat, wide open. It is a gain of eight that brings up second and two. 7.04 to play. Sid Lewis in at a wide receiver. This time, Rocky Washington in a slot left. High backfield. Motion. Nichols will stop for no gain. But the Mideo is in motion, and that's going to cost Penn State five. So instead of a second and two, it'll be a second and seven. He did that last week also. Makes a good play and comes back and makes a bad play. That's a sign of inexperience. There's the call. Now Kirk Bowman will come into the game. So it'll be second down and seven yards to go. Let's see if Penn State again goes for the draw play or some kind of a sprint draw. Well, I, I, the draw play is a great play Head for ball. two reasons. You know what you can do from it. If it's a passing situation, you can make a good play out of it. But also, you can later on fake that draw play and use that as a play action type of a thing. Well, Ron Ricken says it's time for a screen. Slot left on second and seven. I was offside, but again, the way he charged and banged into Todd Moles, maybe he saw movement. Let's see which way they call it. There's two flags, Stan. I don't... Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Todd Moles did draw. Huford off the line of scrimmage. You cannot make a move. There it is. There he lifts his right hand. You cannot do that. Legal procedure. Offense. Now, tight ends can move, backs can move, but once the offensive lineman gets in that three-point stance, he can't even breathe hard. So it is second down and 12. And now Strang is going to call a timeout. That, that's a good timeout, Stan, to settle them down. They're getting a little unsettled. I checked that. It's Iowa who calls, and about, by the way, is their final timeout of the half. Well, I, you know, even in Penn State, I think they should have called a uh, timeout because they're getting unsettled right now, and that's the second mistake in a row that they've made. Well, it may help Strain to go to the sideline, especially at Iowa's expense. Only 12 yards to go for the first down, and they have two downs to pick it up, and another first down would put them at least in position for a field goal. As we mentioned at the top of the telecast, Joe Paterno, as a head coach, has never lost three games in a row. And, of course, he would have to win today. This should give them confidence they can move the ball. It's starting to put together a little drive. They're stopping themselves right now. Hayden Fry, 25-21 and 1 at Iowa. Last year, they went to the Peach Bowl. And they are thinking roses this year. Next week, by the way, while Penn State is at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia to play the Owls of Temple. Iowa will be playing the Ohio State Buckeyes, who obviously will be a challenger for the Big Ten title and a trip to the Rose Bowl. Well, maybe Penn State can capitalize on a team that may be looking ahead. Second down and 12. Wing right. Trying in a half roll. It's a screen out in the flat, and the ball's batted away. They try to get it to Skeeter Nichols, and they had it set up, but the ball tipped away. It'll bring up third down and 12. Well, you know, Doug has got to learn. He's going to get late pressure, and that's exactly what happened. Little got in late, and what he's got to do, he's got to get that hand up high, even, even if he has to jump. Roger Starback, in these cases, when he threw the screen pass, would actually jump up. That's Strobel, number 97, who got the hand up. Third down and 12. Big first down. Kenny Jackson in motion. Blitz from the outside. Strain is hit. He got it away. Shuttle pass got it to Nichols in the 40. Still on his feet. 35. Oh, he almost made it. He's about, well, he may have it. He's about six inches, Stan, but I, they certainly, I'm sure, are going to go for it. Well, that time, Doug Strang, and he did it last week, too, showed a great deal of poise, shoveling it out to Skeeter Nichols. It'll be fourth down and six inches to go. Now, Iowa's got a, a Peterson number 50 just beat Hayden. Put too much pressure. The offensive line must pass, protect better. A lot of poise. McGinnis stayed behind the line of scrimmage. Skeeter Nichols makes a great play. McGinnis comes and Berry station, enabling Nichols to make that play. They're going to get the measurement for the exact distance that Penn State will have to travel. And it's about six inches. So it'll be fourth down. 
if you're thinking field goal, it would be a 48-yarder. I believe Penn State has to go for it, and I'm sure that they will. I, I, I would be shocked if they didn't go for it. This is what they need to make them a football team, especially an offensive football team. If they can go in there and make that first down and take it in for a score, we're going to have a great second half. You're the coach up here. I'm going to offer a suggestion, though. Fake to the fullback and get Williams wide. Well, you hate, you know, when you got six inches to go, you always second guess yourself. You go wide, you don't make it. You would see that they should be able to make six inches. They probably will come back to the same play that they got the first down before. That's it. The setup and a power ride. Look for Mumford and Nichols to come to the left. There it is. Mumford, Mumford. first down, Penn State. Tony Mumford gets a half a yard, but he didn't even need that much, and it is a Penn State first down at the 30-yard line. 6.20 to play in the first half. Good surge, but this is the same play that they, they made the first down before in short yardage, and it's smart. Come back to what you do well. What? They've marked the ball back a little bit, but that still that's is a first down. He's got the first down. Iowa, of course, can request the measurement. Kenny Jackson, the co-captain, along with Ron Heller. But the ball, the nose of the ball is on the 30-yard line. The fans are booing because they don't think a measurement is necessary. Nor does Coach Joe Paterno. It is a first down. Not by much. But that was a bad mark, I think, because his initial surge took him across the 30 to about the 29 and a, almost the 29 and a half. Well, Penn State. Actually, on their longest drive of the game, their touchdown drive was only 33 yards long. First and ten. Strang. He's got it. Got a man over the middle. He's got it. It's Kevin Bow. 20, One 15, five. 10. He's knocked out at the seven-yard line. Kevin Bow. His fourth reception of the year. Mike Stoops, the strong safety, knocked him down. But the game is 23 yards to the seven. Stan, there's not a better flanker in the country than Kenny Jackson. He didn't catch the ball. You see ball, but watch the block. Kenny Jackson comes from an outside position here and lays on the cornerback right there. Almost letting Kevin Bow get into the end zone. Great play by Bow and Jackson. Nate Creer took the hit on the block by Jackson. Now Strang starting to look like he didn't spring back. Just zipped it in the bar. Nice cut. They're in scoring position. First and goal from the seven-yard line. Strang rolling, throwing in the end zone, overthrows everybody. He was looking for Bowman over there, but Bowman was well covered. And actually a pretty good job by Strang just to throw it away. I thought that was a good move by the quarterback. They, uh, Iowa smell that. They pull a guard on that particular play. It was a bootleg type of action. Try to get Bauman one-on-one, -on -one, but he was well covered. Paul Huford, a junior at 6'3", 260. He's got a twin, well, not a twin brother, but a brother who plays offense. Put a big rush on Strang. So it is second and goal from the seven-yard line. Let's see if they go to some sort of a draw. Now I would go out wide, Stan. I think they can run the ball on him out here. Strang looking, throwing in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Touchdown. No, he got it. Kenny Jackson. That was a, did I just say he's the best flanker? Watch Kenny Jackson elongate his body and watch his feet. Watch his feet. Now, this is a great throw, but it's a super catch. Watch his feet. He knew what he had to do. Watch his feet. Watch him get him in. Right there, put his knees down. That is a great football play. The official had to wait and see if he got the knee down. He did. Gansitano for the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. Penn State has tied the game with 5.31 to play in the first half. And a drive well engineered by Doug Strang. That should fire him up. 17 play drive. 89-yard drive. Watch Kenny Jackson. I can't say enough about him. He hasn't said a word. He hasn't seen the ball all year. We get a good throw from Strang. You get a good receiver. Make him go out for the ball. But watch the presence of mind to get the knees buckled and get him in the end zone. Beautifully done. We're sorry for the confusion, but the official first had his hands down. I don't think he thought that uh, Jackson had controlled the ball when he went down. 
5.31 to play. Norm Granger, number 26. Ronnie Harmon back deep. That's Granger at the top of your screen. Harmon at the bottom. Greg Montgomery will kick off. So Penn State with the longest drive of the game and obviously their longest touchdown drive of the year. 89 yards and 17 plays. Mixing run and pass well. Doug Strang having himself a very good afternoon. 8 out of 13, 87 yards and the touchdown. Montgomery approaches. Granger, one yard deep. Hit and miss, look out, 20, 30, 40, knocked out of bounds, up at the 47 yard line of Iowa, make it midfield. Norm Granger finally knocked out of bounds by the kicker, Greg Montgomery. Well watch this, he comes up the middle, now the outside contain on the left side gets caught inside, enabling Granger to get out. He doesn't have that kind of speed. He just makes McDuff, McDuff, uh, uh, Duffy move uh, miss there, number 45. That really takes the wind out of Penn State's sails after driving that distance. And here Iowa has the ball at midfield. So a kicking game problem. Iowa at midfield. Harmon motion near side. Gill with a hole and a big hole. Breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, has a first down at the Penn State 38-yard line. Oh, is he a punishing runner? All right, this is just good running. Now, it's up to Penn State's defense now to, to gather themselves together. He makes a good cut, but Fruin, number 92, gets a good shot at him and lets him get off the hook. And then Mark Robinson had a bad angle and was not able to put him down. We've got a man down also. Now, watch, watch this. Watch Fruin come in. He gets hurt on this. Right there, he had a good shot. Didn't use his hands at all. Good spin by Phillips. A gill, I mean. Now, almost broke it again. Robinson had a shot at him also. Mark Fruhan took the hit, as you saw on the replay. And Owen Gill, 56 yards in 11 carries. Fruhan's up, and he's all right. But Owen Gill, for a tailback with his great speed, is 6'2 and 220 pounds, only a junior. They're big backs. All of them are big backs. There you see the Penn State scoring drive. Seven yards, Strang to Jackson. And that is Strang's. Second touchdown pass of the game. The first one at Dean Demidio of nine yards. Lance Hamilton, a sophomore, and Harry Hamilton's younger brother, comes in in left corner to play Fruhan. First down, 10 Iowa at the Penn State 38. Armored in motion. Granger hit at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for a yard. Don Graham, the freshman, came in to make the initial hit. Boy, is he a good-looking freshman, that kid. He's playing a fine game. I don't think Iowa's going to beat Penn State on the ground. They're breaking a play once in a while because Penn State's playing pass. But Long is going to have to throw the ball. Now, this is a fake pitch out with a delay to the fullback right here. Rain filled the hole beautifully. Second down. Let's call it eight yards to go. Iowa comes out in pro set. Good backfield, two tight ends. I got something up. Long's in trouble. He's hit. And he's down on the sack at the 43-yard line. John Walder came in, credit the Penn State secondary. It could, Long could not find anybody open, and that gave Walder time to get the sack. It was kind of like a sucker play, Stan. They went to two tight ends, split backfield, one wide receiver. He's trying to hit Harmon on a streak to the bottom of the screen. A little play action here. A lot of pressure by the Penn State the defensive line. They put him down. Big play. Let's take another look. Now, there were two tight ends. They wanted Penn State to think run. Now, you'll see to the right, Sefter comes in. Now, Walter comes in from the other side, and they put him down for nice luck. As you saw in the replay, Scott Radisick had the tight end, Huford. Covered very well in the play, and the man down is Steve Sefter. You saw him in on the sack and forcing Long up in the pocket, which enabled Sefter also goes out of the game. And Stan, we're at that big, big moment again. Third down play, 14 yards to go. Penn State has to hold him there. And it'd be a big lift for the Penn State defense after the kicking team let him down. Leskowski and White are the ends on third down and 14. Harmon in motion. Going to try to hit Blitz. that flanker. Here comes Long. He throws, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted. Good oh, no. Pass interference going to be called on Mark Robinson. I stand that is not a good call. He got his hand and you he has a right to go to the football. Defensive 
pass interference. That's out. And that will give Iowa a break. Robinson is the man who came and batted the ball away. Well, normally when you touch a ball, they never call pass interference unless it's so obvious. Now let's watch Robinson come right here. That's a free ball. That's pretty close. He went, went through the man and uh, got his hand on the ball. The official determined that he hit him first before he hit the ball. Keep that play in mind throughout the rest of this game. It is a first down for Iowa at the Penn State 33 in what would have been a punting situation. Phillips, right tackle, gains four to the Penn State 29. A pretty good run when it looked like he wasn't going to get anything. Harry Hamilton and Scott Radisson make the tackle, but give him a gain of four, make it second and six, 3.20 to play in the first half. You know, Stan, the funny part of that play is that he was going to go to the flank, and that was a tight end dragging a cross, and it had good coverage on him, actually, and uh, he get the interference on the receiver that's covered. Steve Sefter back in the game for Penn State. Second down. Long six for the Hawkeyes. Oh. Long rolls outside, fires in the flat, it is incomplete, he caught it out of bounds. A nice try by Dave Moritz to split in, Zordich and Fruhan over there, but it goes incomplete and brings up third down and a long six. But watch Steve Sefter here, you must keep the ball to your inside shoulder when you rush from the outside. He got caught inside, Penn State is very fortunate, Moritz does not stay in bounds and get the first down. What? When you rush the pass, you must keep him inside so he cannot get outside of contain. It was very close, and Ritz got his trail foot down. I'm not so sure he didn't drag it. So it'll be third down in a long six, and you're thinking field goal. Nickel on the year is one out of two, and he would have a following win. Another big third down play. There's a draw. No fake draw. Here comes the rush. Long's in trouble. He's hit, and he's dropped by Harry Hamilton. Fumble. Fumble, and Penn State's got the ball. Joe Hines recovers, and Penn State has the ball in Iowa territory. And who made the play stand? Harry Hamilton on a blitz from a zero position. I was arguing that Long was down and a fumble should not have been called. Let's take a look at it. Now you'll see to the right of your screen, you'll see Hamilton come. This is what I'm talking, is an outside blitz. That's a, a cornerback, actually they're four deep. Here he comes from the outside, puts the pressure on Long, wrestles him down, the ball pops loose, they call the fumble. We've got a penalty on Iowa on the bench on sportsmanlike conduct for complaining about the fumble call, so that'll march the ball deep into Iowa territory inside the 34-yard line. Here's the call. Look yes. at Hayden Fry. He's going to get another one if he doesn't keep quiet. They're pretty tough on that kind of stuff. But again, that's that outside blitz. That time they didn't come up the middle. They blitzed from the outside with Hamilton. He came in clean. He made the play. And he did what you said, George. He protected to his inside, keeping Long turned in. First and 10, Penn State at the Iowa 33. Wing back counter to Williams to the 30. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. A gain of five for John Williams. Half Peterson, the nose guard. Dave Strobel, defensive end. Make the tackle, but five for Williams, second and five. And Kenny Jackson was wide open on that particular play. They might come back, fake that, try to get the ball to Jackson deep. There it is. A lot of time. He's throwing the bomb deep in the end zone, and it is inter incomplete. It was almost intercepted, but even if Hawley, the safety had come down with it, he would have been out of bounds. So he went for the home run ball there to bring up third and five. That's what's known as one play too late. See, they, he came back and told him, and sometimes you get in trouble. He said, I was wide open on that play. He calls his play the next time around. That time they covered because they knew they blew it on the previous play. So now a third down and five. Now's the time for Ron Riggins' screen, screen or draw. Well, as long as they do it once, we can say that Ron was right. Third down and five at the 28-yard line. Strang, Williams, That's Williams wide, open. wide open, he's got it, he's going to take it in, 15, knocked out of bounds, inside the Iowa 10, down near the 9 yard line, Devin Mitchell, the quarterback, drove him out of bounds, but there was the flare pass, 
to John Williams. The game takes it for 19 yards. It'll be first and goal at the Iowa 9. All right, Stan, I yelled on you a little bit there because it was so wide open, as you called. Looked like he was going to get in. Gets to the outside. That's a tough position to beat, though, on first and goal will go on the nine. Good block by Rocky Washington. A lot of time left. Two minutes and one second. First and goal. Williams got a hole. But it's filled quickly. He dives down to the six-yard line. Excellent defensive play by Larry Station. That looked like it might be open for a touchdown, but Station, number 36, who was all Big Ten last year as a freshman, made the tackle. You know, if you could draw it up and you tell a linebacker to fill a hole, that was with filling a hole. That stopped the touchdown. Good running by Williams, though. Penn State calls a timeout. It'll be second. They are inside the seven. And John Williams on the ball game. 11 carries, 52 yards. Doug Strang is 9 out of 15, 106 yards. Two touchdown passes. Williams looks a bit shaken up. We may see D.J. Dozier. I wonder if they bring Dozier in. He's a bigger Here back. He Here he comes. You're right, George. There's no tougher position in football than first and goal at the nine because obviously you can't get that first down. It's awfully tough. You have no room to throw the ball. The back of the end zone shuts the field off on you. Everybody's ganging up inside. you got to find a crease, and you got to dig it out. Last week, if you're thinking about throwing to the tailback, as Penn State did just two plays ago, Dozier caught three passes for an 8.7 yard average second down and goal the ball just outside the six yard line Skeeter Nichols the lone back they give to Nichols he's got room down to the one yard line Skeeter Nichols pounding his way to the one and a bit inside it'll be third down and goal well they caught Iowa they had one back in the backfield Iowa thought pass they ran a straight drive to the fullback to Nichols. Watch him here. Watch the crease there. Now watch the right guard. They doubled onto the inside. McGinnis right here. You see that? Gave him a crease. Got a good trap block by Moles. Almost took it in. They double teamed the nose guard. Hap Peterson, number 50, as you saw. And got down to the one. So there's Skeeter on the afternoon. And it'll be third down and goal from just inside the one-yard line. Penn State using a timeout. They still have one left after this. With the left guard, left tackle. Uh, Moles is doing an excellent job. Uh, Mo, the side of Moles and Short when they're lined up together on the, on the left side. Let's see what happens. We see Jackson on the sideline. Penn State with a double tight end. Demidio left and Bowman right. Third down and goal from inside the one. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown, Penn State. Man, that had to be a lot closer than we thought. They he sneaked that in. That was a good sneak. Well, Doug Strang has had a part in all three Penn State touchdowns, rushing for that one and throwing for two more. We may see the making of a quarterback this afternoon. Now, let's take a look at this. Again, he went over that left guard, though. Station was right there. He got up off his feet a little bit to get that ball into the end zone. Very close, though. Gansitano to attempt the extra point. 140 left to play in the half. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So Penn State, after the fumble recovery by Joe Hines, which was caused by Harry Hamilton, they drive 34 yards for the touchdown because there was a penalty tacked on. They recovered the fumble at the 48-yard line, but a 15-yard penalty moved it inside the 34. Well, that will pump them up. Now, unless you think that Penn State will automatically go into the locker room with this lead. Don't forget the last time Iowa returned a kickoff, Granger returned at 51 yards. Well, they're a very explosive offensive football team. Uh, you know, they're a veteran team. They know what they want to do. They're big, they can run, and they can pass. Always dangerous. 34-yard drive and seven plays. Strang on the one-yard quarterback sneak. Gansatana with a conversion as Greg Montgomery gets set to kick off to Granger and Harmon. George, would you order a squib here? He's kicking against the wind. Well, not really. That's too early, I think, because of this reason. You get a bad squib, it's 140 to go. They throw so well. They could come out with a field goal that eventually could beat you. You have to play the game all out. Let's see what they do. They kick it deep. It'll be Granger again. That is three. Coming to the same side. This time he's hit at the 15-yard line and stopped right there. 
Steve Sear, freshman defensive halfback with help from Don Graham, who's played quite a game, and Iowa backed up at their 15-yard line. Well, let's see what the Hawkeyes do here. They do have a lot of time, but they have no timeouts left, remember. Minute 35. Now's the time you play a little cautious on defense because you got a lead, but uh, taking a few chances is what gave Penn State the lead by blitzing Harry, Harry Hamilton from the outside, causing that fumble. And since then, a second Iowa touchdown drive, Penn State has really executed the blitz on numerous occasions. First down. Let's see what Iowa decides to do. Here's a give to Gill. He gets outside to the 30 and out to the 34-yard line. Harry Hamilton made the tackle, but again, Owen Gill really cutting the ball off the tackle and outside. The gain is 19 yards and another Iowa first down. Clock stops on the moving of the chains. 129 to play. So they, they caught Penn State in a double on the outside receiver, and he's got to come and close in, help out on the run. Once the ball, the ball is, there he goes. Blitz, long as Hamilton, he never had a chance to get it away. Harry Hamilton, again coming in on the blitz, and the long got it away, he paid the price as Hamilton belted him to the ground and absolutely destroyed the pattern. It's a corner blitz, he comes from an outside linebacker. They've been used to see Penn State only come from the inside. It's very effective. Now, you know that Iowa, of course, is going to make an adjustment to that. So, counter-wise, what will Penn State do to get a blitz that Iowa will not be able to handle in the second Well, half? then you move around. You go back to the inside. Let's wait and see what they do. But what happens when you get that outside blitz, you, don't, you put an awful lot of pressure on that sprint-out action, which they like to do. It makes them pull up. Second and ten. Long on a straight drop back. He's rushed again. He's hit, and he's dropped again. Another sack for the Lions at the 33-yard line. Sefter and Walder bookend defensive ends. They give him back to the line of scrimmage, so it officially will not go as a sack, but it'll be third and ten. And Iowa will go without a huddle. But you see what happens when you mix them up. That time they only rushed three, dropped everybody off, and they couldn't find a receiver. 52 seconds to play in the half. Third down. Movement. Gattuso banged in to the, defense, the offensive guard, but... Gattuso is claiming motion, and it looks like it will go against Iowa. Dead ball motion on Iowa. So they'll march it back another five. It'll be third and 15. And they will start the clock also as soon as they're set. Well, if I was Penn State, Dead I'd ball. call a timeout. They got, they, got, they got one left for this particular reason. This, the punter is not a good punter. I'd make him punt the football. Would you wait until after the third down play? I don't know if they're going to have enough time, though. It's going to be pretty, pretty close. Well, now the clock is running, and they're having a discussion, and the official should stop the clock. Well, that's not very good officiating. They lost four seconds on that uh, well, stand. They, they lost more than that. They lost, it was 41 seconds. They're going to ask, I think, maybe that the time be put back on. Iowa, again, has no timeouts. We'll be able to run this play, and that'll be the half. Not necessarily so. The official can have his own time. And Penn State does have one timeout left, and I'm sure they'll call it, at least force Iowa to punt. Long for the throw. Throwing the bomb, and he just threw it over everybody intentionally. And there are 11 seconds, at least by the official scoreboard clock, as Mark Robinson was back deep, really covering nobody. There was no receiver. And so Penn State now... I would guess George would go for the block. I definitely think they you know, it's the only thing to do because, uh, you know, with the time left, even if they got a first down, their chances of getting hurt would be remote. Yet, they could get a block kick and, who knows, end up with a touchdown. Even with a return, unless they went all the way, would run off the clock and would not have it again. Well, he gets it away. Foul takes, and it's 30. And out to the 42, a 12-yard return. The clock... Of course, stops automatically on the change of possession. One second left, at least on the official clock. So Penn State will probably try for the home run ball. See where they can't get out of this. Maybe even a pass interference would give them a field goal try. They should have 10 seconds left. Yeah. It was nine seconds that uh, uh, were run off that uh, were really unofficially run off. Well, you saw the referee, Temmert, go over to the sideline, and it is entirely possible that he did order more time being put on the clock if there is more time than one second, we are not aware of it. Penn State will get at least one play off here. Strang just falls on it. 
And that'll bring the first half to a close. And look at Joe Paterno coming up to the official. Right. Paterno, look at him. He is not at all happy with the way the clock was handled. Well, Joe has to say so and goes into the locker room. And for the first time this season, his team is leading at the half. Evened out pretty well. Iowa 234 yards, Penn State 178. Doug Strang, 9 out of 16, 107 yards and two touchdowns. Chuck Long, 11 out of 20, 146 yards, no touchdowns. Leading rusher in the game is Owen Gill, 73 yards. John Williams has 48 and 11 carries. Ralph will kick off. Bow on the near side. Lewis on the far side. Bow deep in his end zone. We'll get the touchback, and Penn State will start out first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Penn State moved the ball much better in the second quarter, George. I still think they need to improve the running game somewhat. Well, they get a, good, a little bit more consistent in the running game. Was, you know, the strengths, uh, the two big passes, the one to bow, uh, well, Jackson made a great block, and obviously Jackson's great catch is what uh, really did the job for him in the, the second quarter. Penn State had 71 yards rushing on 19 carries in the first half. Here's Mumford with a big hole with a right tackle, and he gets out near the 30-yard line. And close to a first down, depends on the spot. I think they're going to spot a little shy, so it'll be second down in inches for Penn State. Inside linebacker Larry Station and free safety Ron Hawley. Well, that, was a, a tackle. that was a one-back offense, and when they do that, Iowa looks for pass, and they leave a little bit of a gap over that right side, and uh, Penn State made the best of it. Well, it's second down in inches. Let's see if they use what amounts to a free down. Mumford makes a nice cut. It gets out to the 35-yard line. So Tony Mumford picks up 15 yards on the first two carries. And we've got an Iowa player down back at the 27-yard line. Once again, now, this is a nice cut. Mumford starts off like he's going to hit the same hole, sees it closed off, took it to the outside. Larry Station, number 36, makes the tackle. If it's, he's the one that's hurt, that would be a big loss for uh, Iowa. He's a great one. Let me ask you this, George. What is the one-back offense and the double tight end designed to do? It's obvious that Penn State saw something in the Iowa defense that made him go to that to open the second half. Well, what you do, when you show one back, there's, there's various types of one back. You can have one back with everybody else spread out, which is a passing formation. Or you can have the one back offense like Washington Redskins uh, has with Riggins back there with two tight ends, which is a running formation because you got the extra blocker in tight. What Penn State is doing now is showing a tight end, two wide receivers to one side, and one back in the uh, backfield, deep in the backfield, the fullback, which is really more of a passing offense. Iowa is loosening up, and they're running Mumford up inside. Bruce Gear replaces Tony Wankett. Wankett was hurt, as you saw, coming off the field. First and 10, Penn State. Strang will throw. That time, while throwing over the middle, he's got his man up at the 40-yard line and up to the 42-yard line. D.J. Dozier fumble. out of the backfield. The fumble, and Iowa has recovered. The pass was good for seven yards, but Dozier fumbled, and Ron Hawley, the free safety, number 19, makes the recovery. And Penn State, looking impressive offensively, turns it over for the first time today. And that was a nice play because uh, Strang fired the ball. Now watch him, he has plenty of time, stands in nice and tall, fires that football to Dozier, coming to the inside. Young freshman tries to make more than he could make and fumbles the ball. Well, Iowa gets the first big break of the second half. First down at the Penn State 42. Common in motion. This is Gill. He's got a hold of the 25 and down to the 20-yard line. Owen Gill with a 22-yard gain. Harry Hamilton and John Walter make the tackle, but that Gill is really alone. Well, this time they try to get outside. He gets a great block from Granger on Sefter, kicking him out, opening the hole, and when he gets up inside, he can really pour it on. Let's take a look at that. Watch, watch, see the block right there by Granger? Breaks up to the inside. Good runner. Mark Robinson overran it. Hamilton made the tackle. First and 10 Iowa at the Penn State 20. Throw hammer motion. Gill again. Plows his way to the 18-yard line for a gain of a couple. John Walter made the tackle. Gill now at 97 yards. And last week against Iowa State, rushed for 136. Well, the 
fancy about those plays. Well, Stan, I think if you took a uh, compendium of the last three games, most of the yardage made running against Penn State is on the outside, the perimeters, outside the tackles. They haven't made much yardage up inside. That one that Gil just ran was again. It was designed to go outside, and he cut it back off tackle. Second and eight at the 18. Roll. Throwing. Man open. Moritz has got it at the eight-yard line. And that'll be good for an Iowa first down. Duffy Cobb ran him out of bounds. But Dave Moritz makes the reception his fourth of the game. As a little keeper by Long, finds Moritz out there, one-on-one -on, -one on Cobb, too much room. Mark the ball inside the seven-yard line. It'll be first and goal from just inside the seven. Mike Hufford comes in, tight end number 86, along with Fred Bush, who is a reserve fullback behind Norm Granger. Power eye, Bush in motion. Long, pitch wide, Phillips is hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage and a flag is down. I think Bush was in motion, the fullback, they had two fullbacks, they put him in motion, I think he went in motion too soon. Well, that'll march him back five if that indeed is the call, and it is. So instead of second down and goal from the six, it'll be first and goal from the 12. Uh, that was a nice play, they put Bush in motion and come back and run a short side option to Gill. The play was well covered, Zordich was right there, but I was in motion. And Donnie Graham was over there also. Pretty impressive game for the freshman. You know, it's, it's hard to say, but it's a fine looking young Penn State team. A lot of youngsters out there. Penn State will accept the penalty to march it back to the 12. It'll be set, uh, first and goal. Now in this third quarter, Iowa has the wind at their back. Penn State, of course, will have it in the fourth quarter. Stan, they just put another tight end. They're going to have a two tight end formation. I'm pretty sure they're going to try to run some sweep one or maybe run some a boot leg and get a tight end coming across. There it is. Play fake. He got Long it. is rushed. He's in. He gets away. Throws in the end zone. Incomplete. Almost a big loss as the rush came in on Chuck Long. And we've got a flag in the end zone. Now let's watch this here. A little fake. Hamilton came to. He took the fake. Now you got to put him down when you get him here. He let him escape. Could have gotten a touchdown. I think the flag is against Iowa for offensive interference. Sure. It sure is. And it's also a loss of down. So it'll be second down and goal from way back. Dan Harry, Harry Hamilton has blitzed three times from his outside linebacker, come clean three times, and has actually caused havoc. Yeah, they ought to keep it up until they stop it. Well, that'll march the ball all the way back to the 27, so it'll be second and goal from the 27-yard line. The 15-yard penalty and a loss of down. Well, this is a load to go. Now, Penn State absolutely cannot relax here because Iowa has the capability. They do have two downs left to score the touchdown. I'm, I'm interested to see what the coach does when he tries to get it in the end zone or set something up for a field goal. Harmon in motion. Long sets up with time. Throwing over the middle. Broke it up at the last instant. Duffy Cobbs broke it up. The pass intended for Dave Moritz, and he was open, but Cobbs got there in time. And did you see number 53 downfield in front of the receiver, the freshman Graham? Big defensive play by Duffy Cobbs. Now it is third and goal from the 27-yard line. Well, let's take a look at it. Now watch number 53, the freshman Gray. Gets into his drop. Watch him take off now. Right down the field. There he is. He's coming to your picture here. He's going to be a player, that kid. Third down and goal from the 27-yard line. Big play for both clubs. Long. They're coming for him. They're coming. They He's hit. He throws. Oh! And touchdown, Iowa. Eddie Phillips with a touchdown reception. They had him, and on third and goal from the 27-yard line, Stand. Iowa scores. The cornerback pulled up. Now watch, watch. They thought he was going to go down. The cornerback stops, lets him run it in for the touchdown. Now. Mike Zordich had him, and twice in a row they let him go. 
You imagine that third and goal at the 27 yard line. And they score a touchdown. That's what I mean. The play is never stopped until the whistle blows. Nickel to attempt the extra point. It is up and good. Penn State has given Iowa a big gift. Should have wrapped that one in a big red ribbon. <coughs> John Ralph kicks off for the Hawkeyes. Sending Kevin Bow five yards deep. He will stay there, and Penn State will start out at their own 20-yard line. 12:32 to play in the third quarter, and we've got a tie ball game. Well, this is the proverbial wing dinger. Let's see if we can see what happened here. Now, you watch. It looks like they got long in the backfield. Graham comes on a blitz. Zordich had him. But you can't reach, you gotta put him down. The cornerback pulls up, thinking that the play is over. That was Sefter dropped off on the outside. Mumford, around left end, picks up five to make it second down and five. Larry Station made the tackle. And you talk about bringing Long down, he is 6'4 and 210, so he's big and he's strong. That was a great throw by him, but you know, with somebody hanging on him. They had dropped the end off for the flat coverage. He had the back coming out. He had to help. He let him go, and Robinson couldn't get over to help. Sefter was on. Eddie Phillips, and of course, with the scramble, broke the pattern and got behind Sefter. Second and five, Penn State at their own 25-yard line. Tailback. Dozier, nice spin. Gets the oh, oh, 40, 50, 40, 30. Cuts inside and is knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line. D.J. Dozier, who fumbled to set up the Iowa touchdown, takes off for a gain of 57 yards. Are, are they unloading now? Watch this cut by this freshman. He spins out of Peterson's hands. Looks like Kurt Warner on that cut gets a great block by Kevin Bohr. Watch him point out to the other flanker. Put the block on him. He's going to try to cut back. Makes a super run. 57 yards for D.J. Dozier, Penn State's longest play from scrimmage. And the Nittany Lions come roaring back just outside the Iowa 18-yard line. First down and 10. Strang looking, throwing in the end zone. Touchdown! Kevin Bow. Is that the same Doug Strang we saw for the last two weeks? He fired that ball nice and low. Let's watch this. Now, a good quarterback is going to put the ball in difficult positions to catch between the defenders. Watch the catch by Kevin Bow. Between the two defenders, he gets hit, gets hurt. It was a great throw and a great catch. And as you see, Kevin Bow, who took the hit in the head or the back of the neck, and the safety coming over, is still down on the field. Take a little look at it and see if we can see where the injury came. The great part about this is Strang staying there in the pocket with poise, firing the ball. Now they went back to Kevin Bow after hitting Jackson a few times. They hit him on a post pattern. He got his head knocked right there. A little kick in the head. I think he'd be all right. Nate Creer was the one who came across with a forearm. Penn State marching 80 yards in three plays. An 18-yard touchdown pass from Doug Strang to Kevin Bow. It is Strang's third touchdown pass of the day. Well, let's give Dozy a big plus on that. This freshman kid just come out of that pack, made a couple of Kurt Warner cuts, turned up field. He's only a freshman. He's a big back, has great presence of mind in open field. I really like it. Dozier does things that you don't teach. They're instinctive. Watch, the, watch what he does. He makes about four great moves. This cut here, the Ooh. spin, not a cut to the left. His left, all right, breaks a tackle, gets upfield. Bow made a super block coming back from the flanker position. Now right here, when he's starting to pick out, to tell Kenny Jackson who he wants blocked, just doesn't have enough room, cuts back on it, but he made a great run. Gansitano will try to tack on the 28th point. Penn State has retaken the lead in the seesaw game. Penn State led 7-0, Iowa led 14-7. Then Penn State led 21-14. Iowa tied it. Now Penn State has regained the lead again. Gansitano, three for three on the afternoon. Is four for four. 
An 80-yard drive by the Nittany Lions puts Penn State back on top. Ronnie Harmon at the bottom of your screen. Norm Granger at the top awaiting Montgomery's kick. It's a good one. Granger, three yards deep, will stay there. And Iowa will start out first and ten at their own 20-yard line. And I don't think one kickoff has been returned today, has it? Both kickers have kept them both in the end zone. Well, Granger had that one at 51 one. yards. Yeah. He's had a couple. There you are looking at D.J. Dozier, the freshman running back from Virginia Beach, Virginia. A 57-yard run setting up Penn State's fourth touchdown of the game. Here's a team that had scored one touchdown and a meaningless touchdown at that in the first two games, and they come up here and they score four in a little more than a half. We said they opened two weeks too early. Maybe we were correct. First and 10, Iowa at the 20. Here's Gill, running room. He's out to the 30, and he's got an Iowa first down. And Gill now goes over 100, an 11-yard run out to the 31-yard line. Harry Hamilton made the tackle. And that Iowa offensive line, I don't think we've given them enough credit. Watch them come off the ball. Uh, this time they come to the inside. They double down. I uh, Doubled on Hines and Huff at number 86. Sealed off Grain, the freshman linebacker. Letting Gill get in the crack. He's a tough runner. First and 10, Iowa to 31. Here he comes again, and he's got big running room again. Nine yards out to the 40-yard line. Mark Robinson had to make the tackle, but Owen Gill, he's really rolling now. 16 carries, 117 yards. Bob Antko coming in at linebacker. Scott Radisic going out. They're cleaning somebody up there in the middle. Well, well you, know, you know, Penn State is playing a little bit more to the outside to stop those outs, and they're running back to the inside. Now, they, they, uh, you know, it's a good offensive strategy. Probably see Penn State linebackers come up to the inside a little bit now. Second down and one. Long will roll. Looking, throwing deep along the sideline. He's going to be out, out of bounds. bounds. Out of bounds. The pass caught by Ronnie Harmon. But he was out of bounds on his pattern, so therefore would have been ineligible to catch it anyway. If he goes out by himself, you can't come back in. <clears throat> but Duffy Goff got to be, you can't be so casual about this. Now this is a little sprint action to a flank, a one-on-one. -on -one. Now you got Hamilton back there, now caught while well, he fell down, that's what happened. That could have been a big trouble. There's the pattern develop. Cobbs fell down, Harmon stepped on the sideline and therefore out of bounds. So now it is third down and one. Lining up in the eye behind Long. Bro hammer in motion to the far side. Here's Gill. He's hit at the line of scrimmage, and he did not make it. Big defensive play by Don Graham. Oh, did they come up to the line of scrimmage and meet him? Well, they put him in, put him in, in motion. They, they wanted to catch Penn State inside. Now watch this a sweep. Watch Graham. All right, now Zordich did a great job of filling, and Graham fills him off, finishes him off. The lion's share of the credit, no pun intended, does go to Mike Zordich. And who would have thought on third one they couldn't pick it up? Nickel the punt, and it is a beauty. Back deep. Mark Robinson trying to get outside. Gets a block. 30, and out to the 35-yard line. Mark Robinson with a terrific return. He's finally brought down by Dave Strobel at Penn State. Gets excellent field position at their own 35. You know, Stan, they keep making jokes about old Captain Momentum, but he exists. The momentum is going to Penn State. Watch Mark Robinson show his versatility. Great set, strong safety, fakes up inside, puts a couple of moves, gets into the crack, makes a great return. So the Lions at their own 35. Here's Dozier. Running hard, gets out to the 39-yard line. Look almost like the same play. A gain of four, second and six. Larry Station made the tackle. Look very much like the it same play. It was the same play, but you notice how he protected the ball that time? He brought his left hand over as he was going down. He's a freshman out of, out of Virginia. Let's take a look at him again. He's got all the instincts and the moves. Good block on Little. Nice cut. Tries to get back inside of Strobel. That's when you put your head down and get as much as you can get. Watch the ball. Watch him cover. Second and six. Fake draw. Strang throwing to the outside. Man wide open. Rocky Washington has got a first down at the Iowa 45-yard line. 
Rocky Washington with his first reception of the 1983 season. And did he fire that ball? Watch. A uh, little fake this time to Dozy, the tailback, Rocky Washington to the left, single coverage, just a little turn in, the ball is right there as he makes his move, and that's the way you have to do it. Looks like the jersey number has had a body transplant inside. No resemblance whatsoever to the Doug Strang of the first two games. He's playing with a great deal of confidence. Penn State with a wing left and a slot left. Kenny Jackson motion to the short side. Strang is a good tight end, man. Right right open, Domitio! He's got it, that 11-yard line fumble. Incomplete, they call it. Oh, we got it. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Oh, I don't know how you could call that incomplete. But it's a beautifully designed play. Here's the tight end. And was that ball there? Was that ball there? Right on the fingertips. Oh, hey. I, that's that's a, a completed pass. It's a very bad call on the part of the official. You will see in the replay, obviously, Domitio had the ball. I mean, he really made him stretch out. That's what you like. He's got the ball. He's running with it. And the defender, the defensive back, knocks it out of his hand. Ron Hawley, the free safety, was the man who knocked it loose. But it goes as an incompletion. Second down and 10. Of course, it's a great call if Iowa would have recovered. Dozier, this time, is going nowhere. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. George Little made the tackle. It'll be third down and a little bit more than 10. We have received no word on whether John Williams has an injury problem of any sort. Dozier well, playing. You know, when a kid is looking as well as uh, Dozier is right now, you got to let him go. But, uh, you know, a play like that, you know, right now they're ahead. You say, well, so what? But they come back to haunt you. Third down and 10, Penn State. At the Iowa 46, Sid Lewis in motion. Now he changes formation. Now Jackson goes back the other way. Strang throwing over the middle. It is incomplete. The pass intended for Tony Mumford, the fullback, and it was good coverage by Iowa. Would not have been enough for a first down anyway. Tony Wankin dropping off, and Penn State will be forced to punt. Reynolds. Averaged 47.7 in the first half. He's averaging over 46 on the year. This time, of course, he'll be trying to drop that ball deep into Iowa territory. Reynolds, high kick. Smith will let it hit. It does and goes into the end zone. So it's a 54-yard kick for Reynolds. Almost got the bounce that he needed. Iowa on the touchback will take over. First and 10 at their own 20. 7.58 to play third quarter. The Lions continue to lead by a touchdown. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 28, Iowa 21. We'll be back right after this. Time remaining, 7.58 third quarter. Iowa at their own 20. Phillips, right guard, hard run out to the 24-yard line. Good drive by the tailback. Greg Gattuso made the tackle. Give Phillips four. It'll be second down and six. Well, Stan was seeing quite a bit of offense today. I mean, Penn State has opened up their game, trying to use motion to get Iowa's secondary to deploy in a certain fashion where they can get something up the middle that worked, but they didn't get the completion. Owen Gill back in a tailback for Phillips. Second down and six. Here's Gill. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. He breaks loose and still drives forward for two to the 26-yard line. Greg Gattuso made the initial hit. Gill's a pretty strong character. You know, I'm starting to think a little bit. We talked about what the effect of a rush can do to a quarterback, right? Now, I would have normally, I presume, they would throw the ball in this situation, in that particular situation. Maybe Long starting to feel the effect of all those blitzes that he has been exposed to. Long is 13 out of 24 for 185 yards and one touchdown. Third down and four yards to go for the first down. Wing to the right. Long, Long. 
quick drop, looking, he's in trouble, he throws it a flat, it is caught by Phillips, incomplete. It is not caught by Phillips, they rule it bounced off the ground, and that will force Iowa to punt once again, and again, credit to Penn State rush. Yeah, what happened is Penn State jumped their defense at the last minute, long try, they have a long count to check it off, it was too late, they could not find a receiver. The Penn State should gain pretty good field position. Kevin Bow is still a little bit shaky after catching the touchdown pass, so Robinson and Jackson are back deep. Here's Nickel with the punt. He's got plenty of time. Robinson at his 29. A pretty good return out to the 40-yard line. A return of 11. And Penn State again in excellent field position. Jonathan Hayes, the starting tight end, made the tackle. Stan, I don't know if I was getting a little fatigued, but the coverage was very poor on the left side. Nobody, uh, Mark Robinson had nobody with actually about eight yards from him. And if it wasn't for the contained man getting through, he would have had a big hole to go up to. We've got a penalty on Iowa. It may be a late hit of some sort. Face mask call. Now, what, now see, you won't see anybody come into the picture now until almost a full second. Right there. Eddie Phillips, the guilty party. That's a five-yard mark off. On a run back against the defense. First down. Down. Iowa. Face mask. You know, the momentum is certainly in Penn State's favor. It has really changed, and if they can hang on to the football, they're in good position. We've got to bang one in, though. Obviously, a seven-point lead against this kind of offensive football team is not enough. First down and 10. Ryan's their own 45-yard line. Again, the wing. Pitch wide. Skeeter Nichols. Picks up nice yardage. Across midfield into Iowa territory. Near the 48-yard line. Dave Strobel made the tackle for the Hawkeyes. But give Tony Mumford a six-yard gain. It'll be second down and four. And they're doing some nice things. Now, what, what they did, they got Rocky Washington to the right. They stretched him way out to get the cornerback out of there and ran the sweep. Two Strobel sides. Nichols got up inside for a good piece of yardage. Well, Nichols on the six-yard pickup. Gives Penn State a second and four. Just outside the Iowa 48. Here's the give and a draw. And the football and Iowa recovers. Looks like a mix-up on the handoff. Bruce Gear, number 94, recovered. And Penn State, who have given opportunities to take control of this game, does not want to seem to take the horse by the bit. I don't think it was a mix-up. It was a counterplay. Let's see. It's Dozier again. He never got a clean handoff. What he's doing, he's showing his freshman uh, inexperience of trying to run too quickly to get to the hole until he's got the ball secured. Dozier's second fumble of the game, and Iowa has it at their own 49. Long, looking, got time now. He's firing the home run ball. Coverage on the play, it is incomplete. Pass intended for Ronnie Harmon. And Penn State back one-on-one. -on -one. A good defensive play on the coverage. That was Harry Hamilton, too, uh, Stan. That was great coverage. He ran stride for stride for Harmon. It was sprint out action. Now watch the pull-up. He doesn't want to break the box, as we say. He's running one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's Duffy Cobbs out there. And Hamilton comes in the picture later. Excellent coverage. Duffy Cobbs is a freshman. 5'11", 171 from Alexandria, Virginia. And Penn State, obviously not happy with the way Chris Sidnor is playing. He's not going to Cobbs, and he's played most of the game. J.C. Jordan, number 15, is the wing back. Second and 10. Long. He's firing a home run ball, but Ritz is wide open. It is caught down at the five-yard line. Dave Moritz, wide open, and long hit him. It'll be first and goal, Iowa at the five. That's a bootleg action, a little fake here. Now watch that Moritz is to the right. He runs a post. He gets inside the defender. You got Fruin in there. He had him beat. Fruin was beaten last week. So Iowa will have it first and goal at the five-yard line. Today's crowd, 84,628, the ninth, ninth largest crowd in Beaver Stadium history. But the last time Iowa had a first and goal, they ended up third and goal at the 27, and they scored a touchdown on a touchdown pass. Long on the option, keeps, and he's in for the touchdown. They show Penn State the option for the first time in the game. Penn State confused by it. And Iowa, after the Dozier fumble, goes 51 yards for the touchdown. Well, that was another gift. That, this is a good play against a goal line defense. Long comes out, keeps it, takes it inside. That's Fruin again, coming from the corner. Kind of stumbles a little bit here. It's a down-the-line option. They don't pull anybody. 
You had a fire on the outside, could have gotten him in the backfield. Nickel will attempt the extra point to tie the game. Penn State has had opportunity to take control of this game. They have not done so. Nichols' kick is up, and it is good. We are tied once again at 28 apiece with 5.24 to play in the third quarter. A 51-yard touchdown drive. And they ran it to the short side of the field. Single coverage on a flanker on the sideline. Fruan had him one-on-one. -on -one. He busted it in, ran a post pattern. They had another wide receiver with a wide side of the field, that double coverage. They ran blue legs, a nice play. But Fruan it lets people get to his inside too easily. John Rowe to kick off. at Sid Lewis at the top of your screen. We've got Mark Robinson back there. Again, Kevin Bow was shaken up on his touchdown reception. Well, he has not been back in the game since. Rell approaches. We'll come to Lewis at the goal line. Tries to get outside, but there's nothing there. He gets back to the 18-yard line. The Penn State will start out at their own 18. Ken Sims and Dave Chambers make the tackle for the Hawkeyes. So Iowa's outscored Penn State 14-7 here in the third quarter. The game has been tied at 14. It's been tied at 21. It is now tied at 28. Penn State has moved the ball. They have hurt themselves with a couple of turnovers. Strang got room to run. He decides to throw over the middle, and it is almost intercepted. The pass intended over the middle for Rocky Washington. Coming up was Mike Stoops, the strong safety, and almost picked it off. Well, that was similar action to what Iowa did. It was a bootleg short side of the field, tried to drag, drag the flank across, but the... Uh, Strang had the corner. He could have run that ball for about 8 to 10 yards. And then he's got to learn to pick, pick his opportunities. Well, if the Iowa defense holds here, it's going to represent another swing in momentum. Here's a draw play. And running room. Good running room to the outside. Steve Smith, freshman tailback. Across the 35 and off the 36. A big 16-yard gain. And the freshman picks up a first down. Again, great cut by Smith. Flattens it out towards the sidelines. Almost gets to the outside, takes it from a long way. Sear brings him down, number 29. Penn State playing an awful lot of younger players. First down and 10. Smith again, big hole. 45, 50, into Iowa territory at the 46-yard line. So this time, he picks up 18 yards. Ron well, Hall Iowa's definitely tired. Watch the blocking on this. Yakul is knocked down. Peterson was caught going into the gap, straight up into the inside. Penn State's offensive line right now is blowing people off the line of scrimmage. Right up. You can't get through any cleaner than that. Steve Smith is a freshman, 6'1", 202 pounds from Clinton, Maryland. Looking at two pretty good freshman tailbacks today. Play fake. Strang. Be careful. Over the middle, it is incomplete. He had his man open. Rocky Washington, but the pass thrown too short. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Strang, 12 out of 23, 148 yards, but he has missed on his last four attempts. He was looking for Demedio up the middle again, the one that he, he caught that they ruled that was an incomplete pass earlier in the game. But he, he showed his poise. He didn't throw it into the crowd. So he got three more downs now. What do you think about the theory of you're doing so well running, keep doing it until they stop you? Well, you got to keep more fouls. I'm sure they're going to come back to that real soon. Second down and ten. Here's Smith. This time has to pick his way. He gets down to the 42-yard line. It'll be a gain of three and bring up third down and seven. Nose guard half Peterson. A sophomore at 6'2", 250. Makes the tackle. It'll be third down and seven. We've got an Iowa Hawkeye down. Stan, I'll bet my best pair of shoes on it. The interior part of Iowa's line is dragging. Penn State keeps attacking that middle. They're going to blow one wide open. On. And I run in seven. Another possession down. Strang. Looking. Man open. He's got his man. Tim Robinson. Inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. 
So Tim Robinson makes the reception. It is his third catch of the year. They got themselves a quarterback. Now that was, that was the fake to Smith. He took his time, let Robinson come underneath. Deep enough for the first down, make sure he secures the ball. And Tim Robinson hasn't played a great deal, George, but he's made some big catches for them. Robinson is a senior out of Sicklerville, New Jersey. First and 10 at the Iowa 24. Smith gets to the 22. Not much doing that time. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Here's John Williams, and you see the pack on his left knee. I believe that is the knee that was operated on also in the offseason. Well, he might have got another hit on it, but these two kids are doing fine. Uh, that time, Schmidt tiptoed a little bit. When, when, the closer you get to the goal line, the tougher you have to run. Second down and eight yards to go. We finally got the shot of John Williams. That's knee problem. Second down and eight. Single back offense. Nichols. Not much. A yard to the 21. Trying to catch him off guard. Not a bad play. Half Peterson made the tackle, but again, Iowa had to be expecting pass, but the nose guard, Half Peterson, give him credit. Jam things up at the line of scrimmage. So now again, Penn State is faced with a third down and seven as the clock rolls. 2.38 to play in the third quarter. Third down and seven. In the eye, slot right. Oh, he's got him. Strang. He's hit. And they're going to call it a fumble? They're calling it a fumble, and Iowa has the ball. I'd like to see that again. Well, he was looking out in the flat for Smith. Let's see it. He gets blindsided, Stan. The worst place to get hit is when nobody picks up. Smith, number 77, come get clean. That was a fumble. He never had his arm going forward. Again, Penn State turns it over. This is the third turnover. They came with the blitz on the back side. Good call. Yakula came to the inside. Smith took the outside. And Iowa has the football. And Penn State would have had the opportunity for three. They've lost it. Another turnover. Here's Long. No rush. He's throwing wide open as Gill. 40, 35, 30. And he's down inside the Penn State 25 to the 22-yard line. And there's no doubt who is in control of this football game now. The Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, that's what a turnover can do to you. This time it's play action to the front side. Now watch. Now Gill will come right out of the backfield. He's up front. Comes up the sidelines. Nobody picks him up. And boy, can Long put that ball on the target. Well, the Penn State defense is now being pushed around. And the turnovers have really hurt Penn State because they've all been when Penn State was driving. They got plenty. They got to go back and start going after them again. That's Granger, big hole. 10-5, touchdown, Iowa. Granger with a 23-yard touchdown run. And Iowa has scored their third touchdown of the third quarter. Stan, that was just a counter trap. Now, watch this. There's a little counter play here. We saw him going through. They pulled and trapped on, this, on, a, on a counter play. And Granger just tiptoed. Nice running. Iowa's up again. Minute 44 to play. Third quarter. The guy with two plays to score. Nichols' kick is up and good. And Iowa has the lead again. A lead they have not had. Only once at 14 to 7. Mark Robinson and Sid Lewis back deep for Penn State. Giving credit where credit is due, Iowa really capitalizes on those turnovers, and I mean right away. Well, they got a very well organized offense. I mean, they come out here, that kid Long can really put the ball on the numbers. Relk's kick into the end zone. Lewis will stay there. So on the touchback, Penn State, with a minute 44 to go in the third quarter, will have it at their own 20 yard line. I think the Lions have moved the ball extremely well. What they've got to do is hang on to it. And George, I point out on two different occasions when Penn State was up 28-21, they had two opportunities to get either a touchdown and or a field goal. Could have taken command of the game, did not do it, and let Iowa back in. Well, they fumbled the ball. You cannot turn the ball over to an explosive offensive team like Iowa that easily. I mean, they, they had three fumbles. Three fumbles resulted in three touchdowns. Nichols and Smith in the backfield behind Strang as Washington goes in motion. Smith 
hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for two yards to the 22. Paul Huford made the tackle for the Hawkeyes, number 64. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. Now here's where Strange got to keep his poise. Yeah, and I, I wonder why. Now Smith's a nice runner, but Dozier looks a little stronger. I don't know why he's not in there. We know Williams is hurt. Uh, you know, you're, fo you're fooling around with a couple of freshmen. Of course, it's a crucial situation as any time you are when you're on the 20-yard line. And they need a big play here to get back in this game. Yeah, maybe because Dozier has fumbled twice. Play fake. Stray. Throws. Nichols has got it. Oh, he's got the speed. 40. The play, he's got it. He may go. 40. 35. And he's finally brought down at the 30-yard line. What a game. That'll go for a 47-yard game. Skeeter Nichols. Good block by Kirk Bowman, and Penn State comes right back with a big play. This is what's own. known as the comeback block. Well, watch the block here that he gets as he gets upfield. Yakula misses. Bowman hits him, but I think he should have tried to get all the way to the sidelines. Here's Bowman's block. He gets headed off here, tries to make a cutback. Too late. Rocky, They're in scoring position. Rocky Washington made a big block at the end of the run. So Penn State has it at the Iowa 31-yard line. Hope everybody likes track meets. Just take their time. The tight end is open. Oh. Strain throwing in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Knocked away at the last minute. Creel, or Creer, Nate Creer, knocked it away from Kenny Jackson. Well, that was a poor play. One of these days, he's going to put them all together and be a heck of a quarterback. That All right, now, now, now watch. Kenny, they had Kenny cover on this. But the tight end, underneath, you see him running underneath there, is wide open. What you got to do, if you see coverage, even though it's your favorite receiver, you got to get off. Him. Don't hit one interception. Hit that tight end, he would have been on a 10-yard line. Kerr had the ball covered all the way. Pass is incomplete, so now it is second down. And 10 yards to go. Mumford, the lone setback. And Mumford's got the ball. Tries to get outside, breaks one tackle, and gets down to the 26-yard line, which will bring up third down. And a little bit more than five yards to go. Larry Station made the tackle on Tony Mumford. I mean, this is a great place for a screen or a draw because Iowa has been coming the last two or three series of downs. That's how they knocked the ball out of Strang's hand. They've been coming on the blitz, trying to put some pressure on Strang. Strang, 14 out of 26 for over 200 yards. Third down and a long five. Strang rolls, he's in trouble. Now he's going to be shot way back at the 33-yard line, and that may knock Penn State out of field goal range on top of everything. Tony Wankin made a strong defensive play as Strang rolled to the short oh, side. They went to that full leg, and this time they didn't fool anybody. Huff at number 64 coming clean. He's the guy that caused the problem. Number 64, nobody blocked him. The right tackle absolutely missed his block. That is the end of the third quarter. The score, Iowa 35, Penn State 28. Fourth quarter of play, and you see what the sack by Wankett did. It knocked Penn State out of field goal range. So now they're going to have to punt. It what? would have been a 43-yard field goal attempt, but the loss would have made it a 51-yarder. So Reynolds will try to kick it out of bounds. Here's Reynolds angling for the sideline ah. but going well into the end zone so the kick is 33 yards and does not accomplish what they want total offense in this football game is over 800 yards Penn State with 414 yards total offense Iowa 397 now the Penn State defense has got to stop Iowa at one time or another Just starting in the fourth quarter. Iowa, which has scored two straight touchdowns. They were down 28-21. They now lead 35-28. First down and 10. Eddie Phillips tries to get outside. He does. And is out to the 25-yard line. Feeding Penn State to the corner. Phillips gets five. It's second and five. Robinson and Hamilton make the tackle for Penn State. Somewhere along the line, George, they've got to stop. Uh, well, watch White, number 34, get caught inside. They had uh, Wonkett as a wing back. He picked them off from the outside in, enabling Phillips to get outside. And it took a good recovery here to put a hole in only to five yards. A lot of, a lot of young pe uh, players are making key mistakes for Penn State. Second and five. 
Does that count? Granger, he gets out to the 28-yard line. That time Penn State had it smelled out pretty well. Steve Sefter made the initial hit, then it'll bring up a very big third down and two. Stan, the onus of this football game is on their defense. They're moving the ball well. They probably could get in for another touchdown. They have to keep their poise, all right, and play solid defense right now, keeping everything that Iowa does down to a minimum. They're giving them up too many big plays, you know, enabling Iowa to get those touchdowns. They can hold them. Their offense is operating pretty well. Third down and two. Iowa also with a potential to break a big running play here. Long is going to throw. May he's going to run. He's got the first down easily. 35, 40, and he's finally brought down at the 45-yard line. That's what I mean. You get into that short yardage situation, they can break a big one. That one goes for 17 yards on long scramble, and it is first down Iowa. Well, he has the option to, to run a pass. If he saw, he saw the run was there, he took it. He's a very good quarterback. And you have to believe here, George, that Iowa, whatever pass patterns they do throw, if they do at all, are going to be very safe, try to control the ball. Well, they'll definitely try to be very cautious, but again, I say Penn State has got to get back to gambling a little bit on defense. That's what got him in the game, got him ahead. Second team defensive unit in there for Penn State. Here's the counter to Harmon. Oh. Big room, 50, 45, and knocked out of bounds. At the Penn State 40-yard line, a 15-yard gain on the wingback reverse to Ronnie Harmon, and Iowa is just moving through Penn State like tissue paper. Mark Robinson. Pushed him out of bounds. Well, watch, but watch Rocky uh, uh, Alexander, though, to the right here. He, he's in position. He's, he, he spends time fighting with the offensive blocker and enables Harmon to get to the outside. you got to play off the blocker and contain. Alexander, a sophomore, 6'3", 194 from Riverdale, Maryland. First down in 10 Iowa at the Penn State 40. Haven't even faced tough situation as Phillips carries inside he gets three to the 37 yard line the only time that they were in danger of giving up the ball is on a third and two and long made a 17 yard run so a 12.50 to play in the game a lot of time left but another Iowa touchdown could sew it up and again I point when Penn State had a 28-21 lead Two successive fumbles, killing drives, really killed him. Give inside, and a big hole and near a first down is Eddie Phillips. He's going to be a yard shy. It'll bring up third down and one. Harry Hamilton made the tackle. Penn State was in the right defense. They come off the short side corner. They were looking for this, but the twos are, he's not, not a sick overruns the play. And he's been doing that all year long. Now let's watch it. See, now the corner comes, turns him inside, and Radisic is not there. He's overrun the play. Third down and one. Once again, Penn State with an opportunity to hold Iowa. They line up in a power eye to the right. Phillips, he did, he did not get there. He did not get there. It'll be fourth down and one. And let's see what Hayden Fry calls for. Joe Hines and John Walter made the initial tackles. Well, he has a, his field goal kicker is not really that strong. I'm sure he's going to go for it. And he is. Here it goes. It, and he got stuffed on the line of scrimmage that particular time. That time, Scott Radisic's in good position. Good. Somebody underneath that pile did a great job. And Iowa is going to call a timeout and talk things over. 11-19 to play in the football game. Iowa leading by the touchdown. We'll have it fourth and one at the Penn State 31-yard line. On at the 31-yard line. Long keeps. And he did not get there. No game. His knee went down. See where the official is right there. His knee went down, and he tried to extend the ball forward. That's a good call by the defense, uh, by the official. He should mark the ball at the 31. That's where he was hit. Let's watch it now. You, Long is trying. It's a keeper. He's trying to extend himself. Now his knee goes down. Where his knee goes down, that's where the mark is. Right there. He's not even close to the first down. Penn State will take over on downs, and a big defensive play in this game. We'll wait for the measurement. And Harry Hamilton was the man who really came up hard to the line of scrimmage and stopped long. They are yards short, and Penn State takes over on down. And a reprieve for the Nittany Lions.
Lindy Lyons have not had trouble moving the ball. And the Iowa defense has been tiring. Nittany Lions with the wind at their backs here in the fourth quarter. Nickel, 35, and out to the 39-yard line. Skeeter Nichols with an eight-yard game. It'll be second down and two as Penn State begins a drive. They hope will tie the score. Well, the reason this play works is because they put two wide receivers there. Iowa's afraid of the pass. They drop the outside linebacker off. Nichols comes up inside and takes it to the outside. I still would like to see Dozier in this football game. He's got the potential to break it. He, one of the passes he uh, fumbles was after a pass reception, which can happen to anybody. Rocky Washington in the game. Tony Mumford comes in for Nichols. Second down and two. Washington wide right there. Line up in the eye. Smith the tailback. Spraying. Looking for the home run ball. He's got a man open. And it is incomplete. Overthrown at the 10-yard line for Sid Lewis. Incomplete. It'll bring up third down. And a yard and a half to go for that first down. Well, they had the shot. A little fake of the off tackle to Smith. The, not a badly thrown ball. Just a little possibly with a great catch could have made it. Lewis is not a tall boy. Ron Hawley, the free safety, number 19, was on the coverage, but Lewis did have a step on him. Third down, and a yard and a half to go for that first down. Tim Robinson comes into the game as they go slot right. Obviously, a big third down conversion. Mumford leans forward, and it depends on where they mark it. I think he got it. From my point of view here, he's got it by about six inches. He was hit, but he leaned forward. The stick is short of the 41, and he's got it. Without the measurement, he's got the first down. Just call me old eagle eye there, Stan. But, uh, you know, that was a <laughs> that was a tough first down to make. Uh, you know, a, a good, good, experienced offensive football team, if they make it here, let's take a look. Okay. Yeah, they can. About six inches. But uh, a good offensive football team, when they get a kid out in the open like that, Long hits them, we have it. Now we gotta get, we got a big play coming up, a big series here. They gotta get something really and get them down in scoring position where they can use a little bit more ball control. Interesting that they would go for the long pass, showing confidence in their running game to pick it up on third down. Well, one on one on Jackson. Trang, he's running and gets back to the 40 yard line. He'll lose a yard, but it could have been much worse. It'll bring up second down and 11 as Strang is forced to scramble. Tony Wanker caught him from behind. Well, Hufford, number 64, is the guy that penetrated. Let's see if we can see this. Watch number 64. He beat, he's beaten Heller. He just took an inside move on Heller and came in clean. And actually, Doug did a good thing putting the ball in. Second down, 11 yards to go. Clock running, nine and a half to play. Penn State down by seven points. Smith. Gets out to the 42 and close to the 43. They tried the delay draw. Peterson, the nose guard, made the tackle. And now Penn State finds himself with a third and eight at their own 43-yard line. Well, Penn State has been trying to catch Iowa off guard on passing downs, running the ball with delay draws and that sort of thing. Now another third down conversion. The way Iowa's moved the ball, Penn State really cannot afford to give the ball back up to them too quickly. The field goal at this point would put it out of reach. Third down and eight. Strang. He's rushed. He's in trouble. He throws. Wide open and the man fell down. He had a man wide open. Rocky Washington slipped. It would have been a first down at the Iowa 44. And he was open. Once again, number 64, Hufford. Hufford is, is getting in there. This time he beats McGinnis. Goes to the inside. He's coming in clean. I mean, actually, you know, you can't blame the quarterback. It was a little bit of a tough catch because he threw the ball behind him. But Huffett, that time he beat McGinnis going to the outside. Reynolds back to kick Robert Smith at his own 17-yard line set to receive for Iowa. Reynolds, not a very good kick. Smith calls fair catch and takes at the 23. So, with 8.41 to play in the game, Iowa will have the ball. Leading by a touchdown at 35-28. 8.41 Once again, the Penn State defense is called on to get the ball back. Long. He throws along the sideline, and Harmon makes the reception. He's gone for a touchdown. 
Mark Bruhan is beaten terribly. A pass that should have been batted down, let alone intercepted. It is a 77-yard touchdown pass. Chuck Long to Ronnie Harmon, and Penn State will lose their third in a row. All right, it's a good call. First down, play action here. They're picking on Fruin. They got Harmon one-on-one -on, -one on him. He does the worst thing he can do in football. He has no idea where the ball is. Now, Harmon went up, made a great catch, and just outran him. But, he, he, you know, he, they really have done a job on Fruin. There's no excuse for that. The ball was not particularly well thrown. It was, it was up in the air. Should have been intercepted, at least batted down. Nichols, that's the point. Is up and good. And now with eight and a half to play in the game, Penn State trails by two touchdowns. The score, Iowa. Relk to kick off once again. He may get leg cramps soon after six touchdowns. Ball kicked around, picked up by Lewis. He gets across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line. John Breeze made the tackle. 8.28 to play. There is time left. But again, the Penn State defense has not stopped anything or anybody this afternoon. So they'll have to score quickly and attempt to get the ball back. D.J. Dozier back in the game for Penn State. Doug Strang in the afternoon, 16 out of 34. No, oh, wrong. 14 out of 28. 214 yards, and they'll have to throw now. Okay, slant pattern. Lewis can't hang on. Pass intended for Sid Lewis. That should have been caught. That, yep. was, that was a good, well-thrown ball. Should have been caught. It's a little low, but he, the receiver got between the undercover and the deep man, and the quarterback put it the only place he could put it. Iowa's offensive machine is every bit as good as was touted. But let's not forget something. This was a Penn State defense that was regarded as the strength of the team coming into yeah, the season. That's the, that's the shocking thing. It's not too many people can put up points against, you know, uh, the old traditional Penn State defense. Spray the screen to Nichols. Gets a block, 30, 35, 40, and across the 40, and out to the 42-yard line. The gain is 15. It gives Penn State a first down. Mike Stoops made the tackle for Iowa. I know they haven't come back to the screen play since the first quarter. Probably could have used it just a little bit to offset that Iowa rush as they put on a nice block on Wonkett. Nichols runs well, turns up inside. It's a good game. They have time. Eight minutes exactly to play in the football game. Penn State down two touchdowns at 42-28. First down and ten. Rocky Washington in motion. Gray, looking, firing deep, incomplete, intended on the near sideline for Washington, but pretty good coverage by Devin Mitchell of Iowa, really wasn't open at all, second and ten. You know, Stan, Ken, Stan Kenny Jackson has not been on the field in the last two series of downs. Yeah, I mean, right, here he comes James in now. From They're using Rocky Washington, they've used Sid Lewis, James Kevin Bow has now returned to the game. After he caught the touchdown pass that gave Penn State a 28-21 lead, got hit in the head, and has not been back in. So Tim Robinson, Rocky Washington, Sid Lewis have been playing. Second down and 10 Penn State, their own 42. Nichols, nothing. Gets a yard to the 43. It'll be third down and nine. Tony Wankin made the tackle. Down at nine. And if Penn State has to give the ball up here, they may not see it again. Wing to the right. Okay. Got some time. Got the out man, the tight end. Throws to the corner. It is caught. Bowman's got it in a Penn State first down at the Iowa 41 yard line. Kirk Bowman. Makes his first catch of 1983. Ron Hawley pushed him out of bounds. But the Lions have a first down. All right, now it took a little while to pick out that tight end, but he was wide open over there. Right on the, on the right side of the screen. The way the side on him was. Makes a pretty good move, move here. Uh, you would have liked to have seen Bauman get out of bounds because time is indeed a factor. They are under six, uh, seven minutes to play. First down and ten. 
Dozier on a wing right. Stray in the flat. And is caught. Robinson steps out of bounds at the Iowa 33. A nice pickup of eight yards. It'll be second down and two. And Robinson does get out of bounds. Dan, you hit the, uh, the key point. Offensively, they've come alive. They're moving the ball real well. Uh, they, they had some turnovers, but when you get a turnover, you just because you get a turnover, you just can't let the other team march in, you know, uh, back to uh, Georgia, as they say. But uh, their defense has really been ripped apart with play-action passes. Play-action passes is what Iowa's used so well on. Spraying his pass for 253 yards. <laughs> Second and two. Here's Dozier. Cuts inside. Nice move. Outside. 25, 20, 15, 10, and he's down at the seven-yard line. D.J. Dozier from the 33, a 26-yard game, first and goal. Hawley and Freer made the tackle. That's why I wanted to see him in a football game. A little fake. Watch this move here. Makes a good cut. Makes a tackle a miss. Probably should have gone outside. Try to break between two tackles, but they're in scoring position. Great-looking freshman. Short makes a nice block, but he cuts up inside. Looks like Kurt Warner. Maybe should have gone outside Kenny Jackson. 87 yards for Dozier. He gets the give and gains one to the six. Dozier now with 88 yards on five carries. Paul Huford, or Hufford, whichever you prefer, makes the tackle. It'll be second and goal at the six. And... Of course, it would behoove Penn State to get in as quickly as they possibly can. I mean, they've got a throw for it here, George. This would bring him within a touchdown. Now, here's where you go back into the bag deep to see if you got anything special you want to use. Probably try to get Kenny Jackson here. They got him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Nichols, big hole. Is it? Touchdown, Penn State. Skeeter Nichols on the six-yard run. And the Nittany Lions have drawn to within a touchdown. And there's still 537 to play. I, that time, Moles made a good trap. Nichols put his head down, got into the end zone, beating Hawley. Hawley tried to keep him out. A little counter, good blocking. You know, it's going to be a shame if Penn State loses this football game. And Penn State is going to go for two. The offensive unit remains on the field. And I think Penn State's going to call a timeout here to decide, A, if they're going to go for two, and B, if they do, what play they want to run. Well, I don't see going for two now as being that significant. they got to get another touchdown one way or the other. Put more pressure on them if they get the other touchdown because it'll be for the ball game. So in other words, you're saying, what well, looks to be a tie right now, you would wait till the next touchdown to try for the you're two. You're going to go for the win because now if they don't make it, it Iowa can, can breathe do is, easy. best they can do is tie. Tie. Well, let's so, see what... Let's get the let's get the, the one point now and go for the two later. Well, the offensive unit remains on the field. That's a rash. That, well, I hope they make it obviously, but you know, Joe's declaring himself for the win now. I think you get more pressure on the defense when they know it's for the win. Iowa, you know, there's not that much pressure on them right now. Uh, plus the timeouts and everything, but the. Uh, and they're going for it right now. Here comes the two-point conversion. Penn State asked the ball be placed on the far side hash mark. So the wide side is to the right side. Stray, rolling, looking, throwing, and it is dropped. Kenny Jackson, of all people, dropped it. He dropped the two-point conversion. He had it. And he's the last guy in the world you would ever expect to drop a pass like that. Well, Strang shows a lot of poise. He stretched this out, waiting for Jackson to clear. Gets to the corner there, the back out line, the end zone, turns around. Definitely could have, should have been caught. And here's something else, George. It really takes momentum away from Harmon. He's standing at his 17-yard line, and Iowa has 10 people between their own 40 and the 50-yard line. They are expecting an onside kick. I think it's much too early for an onside kick. But the thing to do here with only one guy back deep, George, is try to kick to the sideline. Well, I, you know, knowing Joe, and uh, this is not the time, I don't think, for an onside kick either. It's a good opportunity to get that ball deep. Yeah, that's what they did. And he'll kick it over his head through the end zone. There's a case where you want to make sure the guy returns the ball because they can't set up any blocking. Right, but, you know... The way they've been moving the football, you know, you know, you're uh, uh, hot and fry now, you see. So you say, look, well, let him kick it. We'll take it from the 20. We move it pretty good. Just let's not give him an onside kick. 
Let's not let them get possession. Penn State, 499 yards total offense. Iowa, 557. And we turned the ball over. Penn State turned the ball over three times in the second half when they were on the move. So now the defense must make some plays. Here's Phillips outside. And they knock him out of bounds, but he picks up nine. Hamilton and Robinson, but well, they've got to get better play from the linebackers. He picks up nine. It'll be second down and one. Well, they're not using their hands. This is Zordich's fault. Now, watch. He takes on a blocker here and lets the blocker get to his outside, turn him in a little bit. See, he's chasing him out. You've got to play him off and slide, slide, slide. Always keeping that ball carried to the inside if you can. 5.31 to play. Iowa 42, Penn State 34. Second down and one at the 29. First down, out to the 33. It is Owen Gill. Well, the Hawkeyes do what they have to do and pick up the ball. The Penn State defense, which really has not been able to control Iowa all day long, gives up the first down. And they cannot afford to give up more than perhaps one more. This, well, you just took the words out of my mouth. One more, and I think it's, you know, uh, good night, uh, lady. But the, uh, they're coming now. They're coming after them right now. <clears throat> At the 33, first down and 10. Inside handoff, and there's Granger, and he gets seven yards. Joe Hines made the tackle, but you can't give up seven yards on first down. Penn State has a problem on defense, and I'll tell you right now, it's at the end position. This time, Rocky Alexander gets caught. Now, watch him come up inside here. You gotta, your, end, your ends are contained people. They got to read their keys and shut everything off to the inside. Defense! You pick up seven yards on... And Alexander, the same two people, but... Defense! When you pick up seven yards on first down, you have to get a penalty almost not to pick it up. Here's the inside handoff. Hit at the 42 and knocked back. It'll be short of the first down, but it'll only be third down in a yard as Phillips was the lead blocker, and Granger picks up two to make it third down and one. The clock rolling. Four minutes and ten seconds to play in the game. A first down here, and it's just about over. Common coming in for Iowa. They might run that reverse. The fans on their feet urging the Penn State defense or what remains of it. Third down and one. He's hit and he's stopped for no gain. Owen Gill was hammered at the line of scrimmage. Don Graham, the freshman, battered Owen Gill. And that will force Iowa to punt. 3.32 to play. All right, they got to be careful. Now watch Graham, uh, 53. He's going to be a great one. I, you heard it here. He's a freshman. He's got leadership. He's got all the qualities you want. Penn State's got 11 on the, a 10 on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. He gets it away. Poor kick. Robinson will let it bounce, and it gets an Iowa roll. Rolling out of bounds at the 22-yard line, so Penn State will be 78 yards away from tying this game. Three minutes and nine seconds to play in the game. And this is when you have a little fun. I tell, I tell those kids, I'll have a little fun because Iowa is really sweating. Open it up. 309. The score at halftime was Penn State 21, Iowa 14. So Penn State will have to make a drive just to get the tie. How much more excitement, George? You're right. Of course, if Jackson catches that ball in the two-point conversion, he'll okay, get the ball to the slot up the field. Strang got room to run. He doesn't. He throws. It is incomplete. Hey. Pass intended for Dozier, who really took a lick from Larry Station. There's a case where Strang could have run, gotten out of bounds, and there's plenty of time. Could have made 10 yards and got out of bounds. You don't have to throw the ball. You know, it would have taken three seconds. All right, everybody's booing because uh, the, the, the receiver was uh, hit a little, maybe high, around the chin. Yakulo. Yakulo, the defensive linebacker. He's a good one. Second down and 10. Here's the pitch. Cut up inside. Goes against the outside. 30, 35. He's run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. D-Day Dozier on a 15-yard game. First down, Penn State. And he's over 100 yards. He's got more presence than most of the seniors. 
All right, trap, nice trap by Moe. McGinnis picks off the inside. He's got Robinson out there. If he could have got that block, he might have sprung it. It's a strange game. Penn State offense totally inept. The first two games comes out roaring. And the defense against Cincinnati, which did a respectable job, has fallen apart. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. Fake draw. Trying to throw. Looking wide open over the middle, and he missed him. He had Tim Robinson wide open on the slant. Could not get it to him. And Robinson had great speed to the outside. Could have gone down the sideline. That's a square in pattern. It was wide open. They cleared out on one side for Robinson to throw across. That's about one of the few really... This is one of the really few badly thrown balls that Doug has strang has thrown today. There's no way he can catch that ball. And the entire defense was caught on the inside. If he catches and gets to the outside, he's down the sideline. Second down and 10. Out of the eye. Strang, 17 out of 35. Here's Dozier. This time, nothing. No gain. Maybe a yard. Paul Hufford makes the tackle. And the clock is running with 2.40 to play. Well, what they did, they brought you a cooler. When you get a situation where you got a great back and a good, you tell one or two linebackers, you key him. Okay, you key him. Don't let him run the draw. Let him, don't let him get out of the backfield, whatever. And then they cover the wide stuff with their deep. Well, Penn State obviously would go for it on fourth down if they're not successful here on third. And so they got single coverage on Kenny Jackson, wide to the left. Just get the first down, just an out. There we go. He sacked. Hufford again, buried him. He broke loose, never had a chance. And that'll bring up fourth down. He well, got by Stan Short, who kind of gave him a lookout block. That's exactly what happened, Stan. Short sees that, he's gonna be a little embarrassed because he just, he never stayed with him, watch. He just bumps him, lets him go. He's looking now, and he, oh boy, does he know he made a mistake. Penn State will call timeout. Now watch, watch to the left here. Hufford, who's been in the backfield quite a bit today, he comes clean. Short did not stay in front of his man. A good pass protector hits and stays in front, hits and stays in front. Well, I still say, when they had a 28-21 lead and two different scoring opportunities, the offense was clicking. Iowa looked awfully tired defensively. They were controlling the ball, keeping it away from the Iowa offense. They did not get one point out of those two sequences, which from an emotional standpoint, would not necessarily have locked the game away, but it certainly would have given him a big well, advantage. Well, you, well, anytime you turn the ball over, you're in trouble, but you ha your defense has to get it back for you once in a while. You know what I mean? You know, they you got a bunch of young kids, and they're playing pretty good offensive football for you. Uh, veteran defense, you know, with a, a pretty good reputation nationally, they got to get the ball back. Well, certainly, they have to control the other team's offense where they don't stuff it down their throat, and Iowa just has stuffed our defense today. Penn State has given up 100 points in three games. Fourth down and 15. Last chance. Jackson in motion. Strang. The throw. He looks. He's firing the bomb for Jackson on the sideline. It is intercepted at the 10-yard line, and that'll do it. That's the worst thing they could have done. That's a break for Penn State because the ball is on the 8-yard line. If they cough it up, and anything can happen in football, Penn State has almost two minutes to get the ball in from that area. That I'm sure Hayden Fry has got a couple of gray hairs on that one. Yeah. That's better than a punt. If you were going to punt the ball, you'd like to put it out inside the 10. Well, now it would take a fumble. Penn State... Uh, you need a turnover. Penn State has only one timeout left, and, of course, Long can just about flop on it if he wants to, although they probably have to punt eventually with 1.54 to play. But you have to wonder also about going for the home run. All you need there is 15 yards with two minutes to play. In any event, Iowa, with one first down, will end it. Gill gets to the 10-yard line and out to the 11. It'll be a gain of three, bring up second and seven. The clock running with 1.45 to play. Not, not only that, Stan. Stan, if they can hold him here and make him punt, you got the possibility of a block punt. Right. I mean, I'm, this is not wishful thinking. That was Mitchell, number 21, made a terrible play for uh, Iowa. He's got him in a hole. He's minute, got him in a hole. Minute 27 to play. Penn State with one timeout left. I'm sure they want to use it after the third down play. They will, that's exactly when they'll use it. They'll cut, kill that clock. And but by that time, of course, there'll be 30 seconds to play. Is it get inside? Got running room, and across the 16 to the 17-yard line is Gill. It'll bring up third down. 
and only a yard to go for the first down. And the clock is now at 106. It is stopped momentarily while you know, they unpile. Fry could punt it here, uh, but I don't think he will. If he does on third and one, he ought to have his head not third and one, not third and one. Just third. Is it third and one? Yeah. They want a measurement, but I think he's short. 106 to play, and the clock is stopped for the official measurement. I didn't think he got that much in that point. Run was from the 11 to the 17. Well, you know, Stan, I, I have to be very, very frank. The way Ohio was controlling the ball, especially down here right now, they deserve to win the game. I mean, gonna, they were backed in on their eight-yard line, seven-yard line. If they come out here and make a first down, then, you know, that's... What, the defense has everything going for it in this, in this particular situation. Ten states, last chance. Iowa, about a foot shy of the first down. 106 to play. You can bet Iowa is going to take as much of the 25 second clock as they possibly can. Now it starts to roll. 105, 104. And if they're smart, they will not snap the ball until there's about three seconds left. If Penn State holds, of course, they'll call timeout and force an Iowa punt. You see it counting down. Here come the Hawkeyes. Ten seconds to go on the clock. The 25 second clock. Long sneaks. And he's got the first down. And that'll do it. 45 seconds to play. Penn State may ask for the measurement, but I think he's got it by a good foot, foot and a half. He's across the 18-yard line. The long touchdown bomb, among other things, but the long touchdown bomb from Chuck Long to Ronnie Harmon, where Mark Fruhan was beaten very badly on a pass that could have been intercepted. A 77-yarder is the difference in this game. It is a first down, and Penn State uses their last timeout, but now Long just has to flop on the ball twice. <coughs> Penn State will be 0-3, Iowa 2-0. Iowa headed for a big showdown in a Big Ten game early in the year, their first Big Ten game of the year with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Penn State will be on the road at Philadelphia Veterans Stadium against Temple. Temple comes into the game with a record of 1-1. One and one. They beat Syracuse 17-6 and were slaughtered by Pitt 35 nothing. And this is the first time in Joe Paterno's career he's going to lose three games in a row. Uh, today they could have won the ball game. There's no doubt about it. There were turnovers. As you said, uh, Fruin got beat on that long one. The Harmon, he got beat on a post, too. The offensive player of the game is Doug Strang. This week's award is sponsored by our friends at Subaru, Daily Juice Products, Westinghouse, and by Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Long brings him out, and he'll flop on it. Donnie Graham charges in, and that could cost him 15, but it won't. Long will have to do that one more time, and it'll be over. The defensive player of the game is Don Graham. This week's award is sponsored by our friends at Subaru, Daily Juice Products, Westinghouse, and by Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Clock running under 20 seconds now. Iowa will be forced to drop on it one more time. And that'll do it. The Penn State in position to win this football game. All the opportunity in the world. And for the first time in his career, Joe Paterno has lost three games in a row. Penn State, 34. Hayden Fry and Joe Paterno shaking hands at midfield. That's the end of the game. The final score, Iowa 42, Penn State 34. We'll be back right after this.